Cool. All right. So now, <laughs> you all wake up, and you're all in the back of a cavern. Um, a, a cavern? Excuse me. A, a caravan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're all in a caravan. Does anyone want to hire us after what we just did? We are trained <laughs> professionals. Like, really. That was the most unorganized junk we've ever done. <laughs> so anyways, you're all in this caravan, right? And uh, you all kind of wake up one by one. And then from the front of it, it's kind of like a hooded one, where like the person who's like steering the horse, the horses are up in front, uh, and you can't really see them through the thing. So you all wake up one by one. You're not bound. You're just in this thing. And um, <clears throat> in the front of it, you hear uh, the familiar voice of M, who says, "Oh, you're finally awake." <laughs> oh, you're finally awake. Hey, you, you're finally you are awake. trying to cross the border. <laughs> and then he explains, "We are in the town of Cavanus in uh, West Esha Asar, which is the neighboring of country to uh, Arendor, where you guys were previously." And he says, I have your next mission for our master in uh, some envelopes with me here. I'm going to drop you off in town and uh, give these to you, and I hope uh, that you find your way. So he goes on for a little bit longer, and the caravan stops, and uh, you guys can all get out now. And we're not, like, bound or anything? Like, before he, nope. like... So, let's see. Uh, I don't... I don't like... I don't like what he's doing. <laughs> Are we in, like, a carriage that has, like, supplies or anything in it? No, nope, it's just you guys, and you're it's kind of in the us. middle of this farm town. Yeah. Let me know when M leaves. Well, like, well, he kind of I'm thinking, like, out. before he leaves, like, I want to try, like, casting Entangle. <laughs> <laughs> Can birds spit? <laughs> Do, birds have... <laughs> Do birds have, like, the, the capability to spit? M is getting a little tired of the fact that you guys haven't gotten out yet. <laughs> I'm so, gonna uh, spit on I... M and get out of the carriage. All right, that's cool. M kind of wipes that shit off. <laughs> I I am going to spit more <laughs> than Picker did, <laughs> <laughs> and then I will. No, M and I are cool. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna just shoot some finger guns at him, and then I'm gonna hop off. <laughs> Jeez. I'm gonna leave. Okay. Boris, what are you doing? <laughs> Man, everyone else is okay. I really just wanted to take him out, but okay. <laughs> I, I get I out. He is distracted like... by the spit at this point. <laughs> I, I go over there and just like... <laughs> just get a bunch of that just flemminess. And oh. also, it, it just kind of <laughs> little like roll down. All right, go. he wipes all that off, and then uh, he calls Milo over. It's just Milo, and motions to Milo. Yes, <laughs> call Milo over. <laughs> At the front of the caravan, uh, Milo points, or excuse me, M points <laughs> over to the the front of the caravan to reveal that uh, Milo's pony has been leading all the rest of the horses. How dare you! Front. And uh, by all kind of motions to like take back the um, pony. M? Yeah? Yeah, I pick up my po I pick up my pony. Oh, cool. Well, attached to your pony is a little satchel. And uh, M says, your instructions are in the satchel. I'll be seeing you shortly. And just kind of runs off. And the whole caravan goes at like a speed unprecedented to what it did before, and he's off in the distance already. Well, that was fast. Everybody, kneel down. I show me your necks. Oh, excuse Hello. me. Just, just buy, get down here. Okay. Buy me Perfect. dinner first. What's next? Just get down here. Okay. I want to look at the back of the neck to see if there's any mark or anything. I lift my hood and go prone. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm small, but not that. I, you don't need to go. <laughs> I, I offer my body like... as a sacrifice to my life. <laughs> I, 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 I feel, I feel my own neck. Like, <laughs> according to Milo's vision and Boris's feeling, 
is a small black, almost like a cigar bird, just sitting right there on the back of the neck. Super charred, hurts to touch. Awesome. Hmm. Let's see if we can find somebody to fix this, shall we? Because we're we're still at Sounds one HP. Like a right? good idea. I don't want this. Wait, hey guys, what if there's like something? Nope. Again, I it's like, like a medicine check, maybe show me something. You can roll. How's a fourteen? You know nothing of the mark. Okay, fair enough. Do I know like if I put like some cold water on it, will that make it hurt less or something? I mean, it doesn't hurt when you're not touching it, so just stop touching yeah. it. <laughs> no, I guess that's a fair solution. No, you, you, this is like nothing you've ever seen before. Fair enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. I fell down the stairs and broke my leg. Uh, don't fall down the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> so, uh, wh where are we now exactly? Well, so y you look around and you seem to be in a small farm town uh, that is in a semi mountainous region. Uh, you don't actually know where you're left off anywhere, but you do see a couple small buildings to go into, such as a, a tavern, a general store, and uh, over towards the horizon, you can, or not towards the horizon, just over towards a, you know, a little farther away, you can see a small temple and some other buildings around town. Should we take a look at that satchel? Or should we just run? <laughs> <laughs> just, just like, bolt. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't. Can we find out how to get a DM? Oh wait. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a town. We could probably rent a carriage and leave. But yeah, until just we, wait. we figure out how to get rid of this thing on our necks, we probably should not try to uh, piss off whoever that was. That's fair. Well, hey, let's check Boy. the satchel. <laughs> let's play along with their game until we can come up with any better until ideas. Until we, you know, can choose to not die instantly. All right. So, Milo, you've got the satchel. <laughs> hey, Milo, like open the satchel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I open the satchel. Put the money in quickly. the bank. I open the satchel quickly. Inside the satchel, you see uh, an envelope, and uh, you, I assume you open the envelope, and in the envelope uh, is a letter. No, I don't open the envelope. All right, what you if don't there's anthrax in there? <laughs> <laughs> Can I do a medicine check on the envelope? <laughs> I, give, I give the envelope to someone else to open. I don't want to get anthrax. <laughs> I'll open it. Uh... I'm gonna open up the envelope, see what's in there. All right. You open up the <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Michael. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you open up the envelope, and inside are instructions, and it says, <clears throat> "Make it to the make it to the Hammers Inn in Bronzer Fall in one month." If you do not make it by then, you will die a very painful death. Okay, so, this is why we don't we do don't, both. We don't know where we are, right? Hammer skin in what? Hammers in in Bronzer Fall. So we don't know where we are. We don't really know where Bronzer Fall is other than from the map that we just generally know. So how do they expect us to do that? There are I'm several gonna... buildings around <laughs> you. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. That's cool. What do you want to do? Well. <laughs> is there a blacksmith in town? Uh, yeah, there is. Well, it's attached to the general store, yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go there. Let's okay. go there first. All right, you go into the general store, and you see that uh, it's, you know, this seems like a small town, so the general store does not have too much but there is a small smithy uh, to the to your left as you enter, and uh, a nice old uh, black dragonborn sits behind the counter, kind of just uh, like kind of wiping stuff down. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, uh, where are we? He kind of picks his head up and looks at you really funny, and he says, "You're in Cavness." 
Use your Scottish accent. And what? You're in cavernous. Cavernous? Cavernous. <laughs> what? For real, the how do you spell that? <laughs> like caveness. Okay. PK fire. <laughs> PK fire. Hey, so um, you, you wouldn't know happen. You wouldn't happen to know of a place called. Borgian Fall or whatever it was. Bronzer <laughs> uh, Fall? Bronzer Fall, eh? Yeah. Hey, That's the one. I'm not too keen on this area, but if you go over to the tavern, I'm sure... Uh, one second. What's his name? What's his name? David his will name? be proud. No, what's his name? What's his A name? different dude. No, sorry. Uh, if, if you go over to the tavern, I'm sure the Harwick there can help you. So now, I know... You haven't met us before, but I don't really have a good track record. Um, a good track record of what? Taverns. Oh. <laughs> Is there anyone else who might know something in the area? Uh, well, I'm sure that someone over at the Temple of Apollo could help you. Oh. Ooh. <coughs> Ooh. What that, sounds, Apollo. that sounds much more interesting. <laughs> I like the sound of that. I vote we go there. Hey, would you like to buy anything before you leave? Yeah, you wouldn't happen to have uh, arrows. Yeah, I, I think I could check the back for some. Cool. Yeah, we have lots of arrows. Uh, one pound of arrows, <laughs> which is about 20 arrows, <laughs> would be about one gold piece. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> of course, you measure your arrows in weight and not just count. Right, I'm gonna hand him one piece and, and, and buy twenty arrows. He puts a bushel of twenty arrows down on the, the thing Why and takes you... your gold piece. Yeah, I like get maybe an else something. No. Huh? Sorry, I'm just making fun of the situation we're in. I would like to... <laughs> <laughs> but Danny, uh, I'll like a ton of arrows, please. Hmm? So he's just kind of waiting. Are any of you uh, hey, what do you have? Uh, so you are, these, are these arrows primarily steel, or... <laughs> Which is heavier? <laughs> steel or feathers? What you got for sale? I've got, uh... Pretty much anything you could want. Uh... That's you know a little bit common. I got arrows. I got blowgun needs, crossbow bolts. What do you want? Yeah, I don't think I need anything. Uh, hey, sorry, we didn't actually come here really to to, to buy much. Well, then uh, get the hell out. Well, excuse me, sir. That's not how you do customer service. Well, you weren't buying anything, anyways. Well, uh, we just got dropped now, off never... here by people. We we don't actually know how we got here, so uh, blind and please. Do you have a Do you have a fine crossbow on hand, for chance, and maybe some bolts for it too? Yeah, maybe seventy five gold pieces for a hand crossbow and fifty gold pieces for a heavy crossbow. And crossbow bolts would come a. Uh, about one gold piece a pound. <laughs> a pound. Uh, what? All right. What? <laughs> Who measures in pounds? <laughs> I'll go for a heavy crossbow and about 20 bolts. He goes into the back <laughs> and he, found, he finds them all, slams them down on the table. Wow, he's aggressive. Where is my Ah, wife? of course, of course. That'll be um, uh, 51 gold pieces. Alright, All right, I hand over 51 gold pieces. Cool. Merchant. He takes them and then gets back to his business. You guys want to do anything? <laughs> I mean, I just made a great purchase. <laughs> I mean, I don't need to buy anything. I think I've made that. I think I'm good. I do want to go to that temple of Apollo. Maybe they know how to get rid of this stupid thing. I I am I second that. 
Sure, why not? Dude, I can snipe people with this crossbow. Right. It has a range of 100 slash 400. Alright, so you work your way over to... Ben, <laughs> what is that sound? What's what sound? It's like... Yeah, that's my, uh... Trek bed. <laughs> you, maybe not. I'm very busy. <laughs> well, so... Uh... You walk over to this temple of Apollo, all right? And uh, as you get there, you see it's kind of a, a smaller temple. Like It's clear that just a few clerics kind of reside there and stuff. Um, it's made of like this whitish stone, kind of moss all over it. And right out front, there's a big <coughs> statue of who appears to be Apollo riding in a chariot. And uh, as you're... Uh, <laughs> 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 you stupid merchant weighing things in pounds. <laughs> Sorry, right. that's why my trackpad was so loud. <laughs> so a uh, a um a dwarf cleric comes out and uh, sees you guys all just standing there, and um. He, he says, hey, welcome. How are y'all doing? Are, 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 have both of these been dwarves? No, the other guy was dragonborn. Oh, other okay, dragon. okay. Black dragonborn, right. right. <laughs> That's racist. Well, hey, Caleb, color. what the hell? It's because you're colorblind. We have a slight issue regarding something that we don't exactly want to have, and I just kind of show him the mark on the back. See? <laughs> that looks nasty. Yes, do you know how to fix Really? <laughs> oh, we 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 seem to have uh, been kidnapped and uh, You're a cleric of a sort of folk. Or, no. uh... hey, I I don't I don't know what could help you, but our our mate who's who's quite good at, at medicine. He 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 went out on a journey, but has not returned. It was only supposed to be about a day's journey. He's been gone for a week. Well, it okay. was worth a shot, guys. I'm sorry, what did you say? I couldn't hear you over the large fella here. <laughs> He's done stairs. <laughs> oh. I, I slowly <laughs> back out of this. <laughs> I just stare him down, like, in the eyes, staring for the first time. Like, okay, uh... <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, so I assume if we find your friend, he knows how to fix us? Well, he might. I mean, I don't know what he knows, but yeah, I mean, he might. He might know. Aren't you clerics of the healing god? Oh, yeah, yes, he is the medicine god, but he's also the sun god, and we like to focus on that. No, so you're <laughs> the sun You're the sun cleric, and he's the healy cleric, huh? Yeah, all the other clerics are sun clerics, too. <laughs> <laughs> they also we do have one cleric. We, uh, I suppose we do have the time to go find your friend. Hey, you're kind of a uh, volunteering uh, us. I need that for something. That depends. Uh, do you know where Bronzer? How far Bronzerfall is? Ah, Bronzerfall. Yeah, I can help you with that. Here, I have a map of uh, the. I have a map. Of Geshasar, which is the country we're in. I mean, I'm assuming you know that, but uh, yeah, I, oh. I didn't actually. We got, <laughs> got kidnapped. Here, I'll send, <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a map. It's been sent via Discord. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that right there in the middle, that's us. Kevin is right there, you see. And Bronzer falls all the way up in the north and the mountains and whatnot. You're Why gonna do you have think to jump off there. I I don't know who they are <laughs> or who you're talking about. So. Uh, I'm talking to the friends, not you, not our, not the sun cleric. Oh well, you know I'm a little bozy. So <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who are you talking to? So, uh, um, but I think one thing: if someone dropped you off here and wants to go to Bronzerfall, well, I think there's an obvious answer for that. What do you have in mind? Well, Bronzer Falls is a prison city. Criminals don't want to go near that. Whole city is a big prison. Oh, really? Yeah. I figured that would come across as a little more surprising <laughs> for you. I was not listening. <laughs> I am so sorry. 
We will... Why, why are we supposed to go to a prison city? Who knows? Quite old, I'll admit. I can't tell you that, but what I can tell you is that no matter what, you're gonna want to stop in this city here, I see my gag. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. Boy. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you'll be able to find a guide who can get you through the mountains. If you go by yourself, you're most gonna like, most likely gonna end up dead. <laughs> Huh. I, I guess that's the plan. I suppose we gotta make it towards that way. Oh, so how far uh, is that? How well, long so, you I... see, if you look at this here, uh, hex grade on the map, you see about each hex is about one, uh, one, one day's worth of travel. So it should okay. take about, about two weeks to get to Bronze Hall. That's oh. a long time. Yeah, but you know, you're gonna have you're gonna have fun along the way. It's a real nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if uh, fearing for <laughs> fun along the way. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I trust this guy anymore. Well, yeah, I'm glad I can get one of my friends out here for you. <laughs> Another sun cleric. I, I, you know what I feel? Like, I feel like we've gone to the temple and there's just this guy here who we assume is a cleric. He's just BSing this all. No, I can bring you, I can bring Honestly. you inside. I can bring you inside. You can meet my friends. I got a sun cleric and a poetry cleric. <laughs> oh my god. Nope, nope. I, honestly, I think, I think I'd rather just go to Osma Gag. Wait, can I? Go? Aren't you gonna help me with my friend? My medicine friend, aren't you gonna help me? Uh, we only have like a month and then we'll die. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can agree if with you. Our friend. Um, well, why, why are they gonna die? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, you know these things on our necks here that uh, you keep ignoring us about? Uh, uh, that's no. what we're trying to fix. I'm not ignoring you, I'm telling you, I have a friend who might be able to help. He's only about a day's away. If you have a month, why have, just why be my back yet? We don't know. That's why I want you to help me. <laughs> uh, you I know suppose you'll be able to help me if you guys think uh, Mr. DM. Right. Sir, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're we're still at one <laughs> HP from that that devastating blow. Oh no, I'm sorry. You're you're back to full HP okay. after being dropped off. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, now we don't have to be careful. So when we were knocked, like knocked unconscious, that was that actually was a, a long rest. rest. <laughs> sure, I mean you had to go all the way across the country, so yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, team meeting, everybody, away from the sun cleric. <laughs> all right. Uh, I meander uh, outside. Team, I suppose. We are already I, outside. I meander towards the sun. Further. Uh, excuse me, we're gonna I meander towards the sun. <laughs> I say, hey man. <laughs> and then I get confused. I say. <laughs> so. No, we want to, all right, do we want to actually help this guy find his friend, or do we want to just. Well, I suppose if it's our chance to get these things off, we could. I mean, this is the small amount of, like, agency that we have yeah, let's, right now. Let's, let's I think, we think should about take it. it. We, got two, we got a month. Wrong. We got a month to do uh, two weeks' worth of travel. Uh, and besides that, we have two weeks to figure out what the hell is going on. So let's, let's try to fend for ourselves for a little bit, right? Yep. I suppose you're wrong. All right. Well, so yeah, but what if help? this... What if this guy's been locked up or something? We gotta help him. Yeah, you're not wrong. Okay, so break and back to the sun cleric. <laughs> We're like three feet <laughs> away from him. <laughs> you know, this was just silent discussion so that the sun cleric wouldn't keep butting in. <clears throat> yeah, like. <laughs> Oof. All right, sir. We we've decided that yes, we would like to go after your friend. Where is he? Well, I'll help you. Yeah, I can lead you. He's going a little bit east. Of his path. It's right across the other side of the tent. So let me, let me, uh, 
I just muse your accent getting worse each time. I also hear increasingly <laughs> shuffling of papers. Like frantically <laughs> flipping. Oh my me, gosh. Sorry. I can I, I can guide you to the other side of the town and you follow me and I'll show you where he went. I'm not gonna leave with you though, because I don't I don't think you'd want to protect me. That'd just be a little annoying, don't you think? Oh yes, it's true, I hate those games. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well follow me, I'll show you. So uh you I mean if you so guys what, all what's his up. pace as he walks? Is it like Faster than our sprint, but s slower than our, or like slower than our sprint, but faster than our. <laughs> no, yeah, he's I'm actually. Being busy. Yeah, he's being really leisurely and it's kind of pissing <laughs> you guys off. Uh, so... No, this one's even slower than just your walk. So. Yeah. He walks. He's walking and he's kind of showing you everything around town. So he's like, "Oh, and over there we got ourselves the tavern. That's where he can meet Darwick. I'm sure he'll be able to help you with whatever you need. You need to get I'm some gonna, uh, to live. And uh, oh, I don't know if he can help you with that, but. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab his hand and start trying to pull him fast. And he speeds up a little bit. He's like, ah, I didn't know you were in such a hurry, but all right. And then he points out onto your left. He's like, that over there is the precipice. That's our town theater. It's the one thing we can do here that's really fun. In a, such a small farm town like this, there's not much to do. <laughs> this guy is so annoying. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and intimidate him. We're helping you out. We don't have a lot of time. Please just move. just move a little faster. All right, you need a roll for intimidation. Yeah. So roll. I am. You're nice. Fourteen. All righty. Well, he's like, all right. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm gonna start. You want to just speak up? And he just kind of picks up his face, starts walking towards the edge of town. Just becomes extremely passive aggressive. <laughs> Yeah, so anyways, he gets uh, off to, like, the side of town, and you're right next to this big building, which he points out is, uh, like, where the town's nobility stays and stuff like that. And as you can see, there's kind of, like, a forest ahead of you, and there's a tiny path that goes in. And he points down the path and says, Ah, that's where my friend Fizza went. And, uh, hey, he just went down there. He's supposed oh, to Oh, yeah, walk. your friend's name is Fizza. Fizza, yeah, he's walking down there. He's about my height. He's got blonde hair for a dwarf, though. Not very common for us, you know? And, uh... He's going down there, and he, he's supposed to come back, and he didn't. Okay, I'm going to start moving in that direction now and hope the guy doesn't follow us anymore. He says, yeah, he was supposed to find this shrine, but a really old shrine. It's like a fountain kind of thing, but he he never came back, so I, I'm I'll gonna, just leave you now. I see you walking away, bye-bye. Right what? I'm going to cut him off as he's talking, <laughs> pull my dagger out, and just say, you better fucking shut up. Alright, you don't have to tell me twice. I'll be going back to my house. See you later. I don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> He'll just walk away now. So you guys are at the <clears throat> mouth of this trail that goes down in the woods. I... I'm the neutral gun in the party, and even I don't care that you shut that knife in his face. <laughs> well, alright. Cool. I mean, I so, figure we better get going, yeah, let's... right? All yeah. right, so this is a, a pretty narrow path, so you're going to have to walk single file. So you need to determine what order you're going to be walking in. All right. Well, who's, I, who's I'll tell you, this Milo kid, he, he took, like, arrows to the chest and they bounced off. So I, I, I think this... Yeah, I'll go first. I'll walk up I'll front. Clear, I'll most certainly be behind him because I am the the persuasion of the group with my charisma of zero. <laughs> I guess I'll take the back. <laughs> All right, I'll be in between the two large. <laughs> I'll be a sandwich. Oh no! All right, wait, so what's the order? It's like Milo in front, then Boris, then Milo. Tech no, then Heckman, then me, then Boris. Alrighty, cool. And so, do you guys want to walk at full speed? I'm assuming that uh, Milo, you're still on your horse. Yes, because horse keeps me at 30 feet. <laughs> cool, so you guys can all be walking uh, 30 feet, or you can tread stealthily, or uh, tread with a good, a good amount of passive perception. You guys get to decide. I can already tell you now, if we try to do stealth, it's not going to work. <laughs> what are we stealthing from? Yeah, like, I'm not worried about stealth, but, like, looking around to see as much as mm -hmm. I can. Yeah, I like the idea of passive perception. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys are going to walk at about 20 feet. Um, it, like your speed of 20 feet instead of 30. Yeah, because you're going to keep your eyes out for things. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so as you're walking down uh, this road, 
it's starting to get a little late. So, you know, he said it would be about a day's journey. You've been out for maybe maybe six hours just going along this path, and there haven't really been any places to divide, diverge out to, uh, so you haven't noticed anything weird. Uh, but as you're kind of finishing, like, hour six of this walk, um, you do notice uh, up in front of you, to the left, is just a stake with a skull on top of it. And there's, like, a little red flag that's kind of flying out next to it. And uh, you can see that there's a little path that leads behind it. Oh, okay. Can I kind of look at the uh, path for any, like, tracks or anything like that? Yeah. So you... Uh, can you roll... What would that be? Yeah, I'd do survival if I were you. Okay. Yeah. Especially since you have a plus five in survival. Yeah, I do. Roll d20 plus five. Boom. Oof. Fourteen with the plus five. <laughs> You're not rolling very high today. No, I'm not. Yeah, so you you notice um, some footprints next to like these larger kind of divots in the in the dirt, kind of created like a little bit of a, a little bit of as if something was like rolled through there or whatnot. Like dra dragging. Yeah. Maybe. So are there... there are some tracks here, uh, some footprints, but uh, there's these weird spots that maybe could be something was taken this way, being dragged on the ground. <coughs> you said there was a, a red flag. Hmm? My... There's a bug in my room, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a little red flag on the skull. Are there any distinguishing marks on the flag? Uh, no, it's just a red flag, like almost a red rag, almost. Okay. Anything, like, can I tell what, uh, what kind of skull it is? Is it a human? Uh, as far as you can tell, it's a dwarf skull. Okay. Yeah, you can tell Ooh, because it's that? a little, it's, it's a little wider. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is an orphan we're supposed to find. What do y'all do? Um, this, is this the direction that we were told, like, uh, following this flag is going to lead us where we're supposed to go, or is this an offshoot? Following the flag's going to be a little bit of an offshoot. Your call, guys. Well, something happened here. I think... <laughs> well, I, I suppose we should probably take a look. If that's a dwarven skull, uh, well, maybe another dwarf got taken this way. You might, yeah, that's true. We should, we could give it a check. Uh, so, Probably why common, it hasn't been here in a few days? Common knowledge is that uh, the main population of this subcountry are uh, dwarves and dragonborns. Mm -hmm. So it's not uncommon for it to be a dwarf skull. But yeah. still, might yeah. might be a good time to check it out. <laughs> All right, so you guys want to proceed down there? Yeah, but sure. like, I want to be extra careful here. We don't extra. know what happened. I'll try my best. So you're going to be extra careful on your way down. So as you go down, maybe about me like 100 yards in, uh, you can see um, in front of this cave opening, you see two, or excuse me, one second, let me see what you see. <laughs> in front of what you see, you see two cultists and a wolf. Oh my. Yeah, and they're just... Chilling, sitting around a campfire. So they're just chilling, huh? That that's fun. And it's just in front of a cave opening. Is there any like overhang of the cave at all? I guess like how, how where is the cave? Hey, I'm real sorry. I forgot to do something today, and I have to go do it right now. So we're gonna take a little break. Like how long of a break we talk? Like ten minutes. Huh? Oh, okay. Michael, what'd you forget? Dude, he's gone. <laughs> he dipped. All right, all right, all right. Babies in our so, all right, here, I'm going to close the time, window. We left off. Y'all were looking for the medicine cleric, as the sun cleric asked you to. And then we and stopped and we found a skull. You stopped and, yeah, so you're all just chilling in the woods and you're on this path. And you see this... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? See, this... That was me closing my window. <laughs> you see this stake in the ground, and on top of it is a, a skull with a little bit of a red, <coughs> little kind of flag strip of, 
uh, fabric coming out of it. And uh, you look down, kind of see a path that diverges, and there's several of these leading down the way. Two several roads diverge in a yellow word? Uh, it's not a yellow wood, but yes, two roads are diverging. <laughs> I, th I thought we had already kind of... like I don't remember... I remember we had went forward a little bit, and we saw uh, a stopped at a cave. Oh, I right, yeah. Saw two With, there was like a, a cultist. Yeah, two wolves and a cultist. Yes, excuse me. I'm so <laughs> sorry. So it's like the start of a bad joke. <laughs> you are outside of a cave, and there are two wolves and a cultist. In or, yeah, two wolves and a cultist in front of these entrance. Uh, they're all sitting around a little campfire. Um, the cultist would be facing you, and the two wolves are kind of facing away from you. They're like laying down, and then the entrance is maybe ten ten feet away from that that campfire. Can they see us? <laughs> nope. They are they are completely unaware of your presence. Are the wolves domesticated? Uh, by the cultists, sure. <laughs> Come here, Not by us. <laughs> well, domesticated animals are typically less feral. Or, by they're definition, not feral. They're still going to kill <laughs> us. Yeah, either way, they are dangerous to us. They're not going to attack the cultist unless we make them. I'm going to get off my horse and just, or my pony and just kind of tie him up to a rock nearby and be like, stay. All right. It's dangerous to go ahead. Cool. Well, it seems that we have to get past this uh, robot man and these wolves here. <coughs> anyway, we can take him from a distance. Um, I, mean, I have got arrows. I got a crossbow with their names on it. I technically have a crossbow as well. I was kidding about Wait, the names thing. Names? It's my crossbow. Oh, oh, no, I, I have a bow with the bow's name on it. <laughs> What's the bow's name? Bo. 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 <laughs> Bo bird. <laughs> no, no, right now the, the bow is only named Bo, but if you enchant it with flames, then it's a bow burnum. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, how do we want to take care of this? Well, let's Just shoot some stuff. Well, if there are more in the cave, we don't want to be alerting of our presence or anything like that. So we should kill them. Well, we should do it quietly if we do. I mean, crossbows and bows are pretty quiet, right? Quieter than my sword. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a my screaming sword? Makes a sword. lot of noise. <laughs> no, but swords on... They're, it's not usually quiet to sneak up uh, to try to attack someone with a sword. <laughs> right. At least in my experience. So I suppose you all will try to uh, take care of him with your bows? I mean, I guess. How, uh, wait, how far no. away is uh, uh, the man? Uh, they're about 45 feet away. 45 feet away. That is within so, your range. I'm just going to so, draw my sword to be ready for when they inevitably charge at us. Hey, heck, man. Hey, what's up? You want to take the dude or the wolves? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Alright, you take the first shot, and then I'll fire after you. Alright. I load my heavy crossbow with my big, thick, burly arms. And uh, I, I, I take a take a shot at the cultist. All right. Can you roll for the hit, please? All right. I got a 15. 15? All right. So you shoot, and now can you roll for damage? I can. Do you want me to? Where the hell are my dice? I would really like you to. Please roll for damage. I got four. No, wait. Two. Well, Two? I added I instead of subtracting. I got two. All right. So, uh, you hit this cultist. Wait, wait, you got roll... a... What's your dex modifier? Minus one. That would be why. That's <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's how I got <laughs> a two. He gets an arrow straight into his, like, uh, 
it right into his shoulder, and he's like, Whoa, what the fuck? And both wolves kind of peek up and start howling and shit, but they haven't quite seen you yet. The wolves are kind of sniffing around. All right, I'm going to fire uh, one arrow at the dude, preferably in the face. I mean, but... Yeah, roll. I mean... <laughs> I would prefer to kill So this is, this is a really uh, sad situation here. I've got a, a natural one plus oh, my no. dexterity of three. No, not, it's a nat one. That's that's not good. <laughs> yeah, okay. So as you... It, what is this with? Like, just a bow? A short bow. Yeah, so as you hold up your short bow, you, like, you, you pull back the thing, and then the arrow's feather kind of cuts your thumb on the way out, and oh, this gosh. doesn't really fly forward very far. Uh, and then due to all of this kind of ruckus that you've been making, the cultists and the wolves have, uh, have gotten onto your scent, so everyone should roll for initiative. Here oh, we go, boys. Shit. Oh, boy. I'm so sorry. What do we it's roll a... for initiative again? I uh, your initiative plus a d20. <laughs> okay. Can I roll a d20 plus my initiative? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, I wasn't sure if it was like a d8 or whatever. Let me find my d20 again. Where's my uh, initiative? Uh, right, right. Okay, so... <laughs> oh, that's <a> nat 20. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> One second. That's I'm dumb. so frustrated. I'm going last, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, because you right. rolled one on that. Wait, wait, what, did, what did Caleb get? Caleb I got, got a lot of and eighteen. <laughs> ben, what did you get? Net twenty plus an initiative of three. All right, Ben, you can take your turn. <laughs> <laughs> so they're still about forty-five feet away. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and shoot this dude again. All right, go for it, baby. Okay. That one is an eighteen plus Dex three. All, All right. right, so you definitely hit him. You can roll for damage. Okay, that is 1d6. Yeah. Fuck. Well, plus dex. Yeah. Uh, seven. Seven damage. <coughs> Diggity damn. So you shoot the cultist and he gets hit Boromir style in the other shoulder. And goes, oh, <laughs> very audibly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, would you like to move or pick her? Uh, I don't think so. I'm good here. All right, Boris, you can take your turn. <laughs> it's me. Well, I can't do. Uh, how, how far did you say he was? Still about 45 feet away. 45 feet, yeah. Well, I can't rightly do a whole lot right now. Because, like, my only, like, range thing is, like, at 30 feet. Um, this is when you hold your action. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yes, I would like, like, when he comes in range, I'm going to use Thorn Whip. And uh, also, right. 30 feet. importantly, it does not shift your place in initiative. It's, yeah. you are spending your reaction and potentially wasting a turn if the thing doesn't happen. Yeah. Alrighty, so this cultist is going to move next. So he's just going to um, sprint up and get, or, you know, he's going to run up about, you know, the 30 feet huh. that is pretty standard for movement. <laughs> he, he run and, up, uh, he'll run up he, about 15 feet, and then Caleb's thing will go off. Oh, okay. So he'll run up. I was going to say, he's also very noticeably panting and whatnot with these two arrows sticking right out of his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so as he runs up, uh, Caleb, you can now attack. He's in range. Cool. Yeah, uh, I create a long vine like whip covered in thorns that lashes out in command towards the creature in range. I make a melee spell attack against the targets. Cool, so, do that. Hello. 1d20 plus 5. Oh, whoops. Oh my gosh, Caleb, you're holding up the game. My <laughs> god, Caleb, this is the yeah. second time you've disappointed us. <laughs> what was the first time? When you showed up late, I guess. Also Did that not work? You know no, give it a you moment. It has to find the D20. <laughs> can, I, can you just have a physical die? Yeah. Uh, usually this is faster. I don't know why it's being so slow. There oh. we go. Oh, hey! You rolled a five? 
Yeah. Oh, you got a 10. <coughs> which is probably not enough. Yeah, probably. so uh, you whip around this cultist, but he just manages to kind of duck under the way. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Oh, wait, so... Well, that's your second one. <laughs> We're going to use the first up. roll, I'm sorry. <laughs> the second <laughs> roll is the real one, I specify <laughs> So you kind of whip, but you just manage, like, he just kind of ducks under your attack or whatnot. Okay, <laughs> I whip, but I don't name. <laughs> that's exactly it. He, in fact, exactly. Well... So the cultist, anyways, is going to run up the extra 15 feet, so now he's only 15 feet away from you guys, um, but he's just going to kind of stand there and keep panting, and he's kind of touching the wounds around those arrows in his body uh, that you have put in him. And then the next person to go will be Jared. He seems to be in pain. All right. Well, he is well within range uh, for me to shoot another crossbow bolt at him. All right. It takes a move action to reload, right? Yeah. You know what? Sure. <laughs> so I'm going to stand perfectly still while I shoot this arrow. <laughs> I, I just... I got a 10. Hit, hit. 10? Which will not hit. All right, so you, you aim your crossbow straight at the middle of his chest, and you attempt to shoot. And as you shoot, you realize you weren't really looking down the sights correctly, and it goes way off. He's just chilling there, panting. Do you know how to use this thing? <laughs> I'm worried. You're only two. <laughs> All right, and now those wolves that have been so patiently waiting <laughs> are both going to howl at the moon, and then they both are going to run up um, 40 feet to be on either side of that uh, cultist. So they're all just um, five feet in front of you. Oh wow, that got close. Yeah, okay. and so um, the first one is going to bite Milo. Bring so, it! What is your uh, here? I'll just what's your AC? It is sixteen because I'm uh, using my sword two-handed at the moment. All right, so he hits you. For... Oh no, <laughs> that's a lot of damage. <laughs> Eight damage. Yeah, Ooh. that's a lot of damage. And now, please roll a, a strength saving throw. I know. I'm, let me do my damage first. <laughs> yeah. Okay, strength saving throw. Yeah. Good. I have these. Gosh dang it! <laughs> what do you get? Um, nine. That's All right. Enough. So the the wolf. I go prone. Up I little Milo and throws him down on the ground. He's Ow! Knocked prone. I and now uh, this next wolf is right up. Next to Boris, and he's also gonna try to crunch down on you. Uh, but he he tries to crunch, but he misses. And now it is Milo's turn. He just does that hey, little awesome. thing where the dog's awesome. teeth just click. <laughs> they just go. <laughs> okay, so I will spend half my I will spend half my movement to stand back up. Yeah. And I will hit the wolf with my sword. Do it. I'm excited. Just punch it's... the wolf square in the face. Uh, how's a 21 to hit? A 21 to hit? I don't know. Yeah, you definitely hit him. <laughs> okay, cool. Roll for damage. Um, oh, okay. So, da, 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 da. 12 points of damage. 12 points okay. of damage. You strike the wolf on its head with your sword, kind of like laterally, and it just goes straight into the wolf's skull, and you hear him whimper, and his back's legs start twitching. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> All right, and Tinker, now it's back to you. Who is? Uh, being a paladin Tinker. is great. Oh me! Ah. I'm gonna fire another arrow at uh, Boromir. <laughs> Do it, <laughs> Sean Bean. You will die today, sir. Uh, so I'm gonna fire another arrow. Uh, it's gonna be an eleven. An eleven. Yeah. All right. So you shoot it. You really, you're getting a little boastful. So you try to shoot it right at his head, and it just kind of grazes right off the top of his head, takes his hood down. Uh, as that happens, you can see he's a, a dwarf with some face paint. He's got a really thick red beard. Uh, but yeah, you missed him. Cool. <laughs> I thought I grazed him. <laughs> I he grazed his hood. <laughs> cool. Uh, and reloading that would have cost your movement. So Boris. Well, I, I, actually, okay. It's not that it costs a movement. It's that you can only take one shot every turn or on your turn. 
Okay, Picker, do you want to move? Uh, <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll <laughs> take with two arrows inside his chest right in front of you. I'll take uh, I'll take about fifteen steps back. <laughs> Precisely fifteen steps. And how many feet Wait, does that move you? I'm going to say that's fifteen feet. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, I walk a foot at a time. Or in front of the other. Uh, Michael. Michael. Mm. Uh, was he within melee range of any of those guys? Oh, yeah. Hey, so, Ben, this cultist yeah. is going to try to uh, yeet you real quick. Oh, no. What's your AC? Uh, 14. 14. All right, he yeets you. Uh, and he's going to hit you for... What's he using? Four damage. Four? Yeah. Is okay. he using a dagger? <laughs> no, he's using a scimitar. He just oh, wow. takes the scimitar and he whips you and knocks a couple <laughs> of their feathers right off. He takes his longest fingernail and he just. No, bombs those you were my there. favorite feathers. Yeah, yes. All right, Boris. <laughs> go ahead. Wait. Uh, also. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, that was the rogue doing that? <clears throat> what? The cultist? That was... No, Benjamin. Uh, Picker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could use disengage as a bonus action. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that that's oh. something you have, like, uh, now that you're level 2 as well, you have the cunning action. So as a bonus action, you can, like, hide, disengage, and I can't remember the one other thing I was telling so you about. let's just say that yeah. you disengaged. Okay. Yes. And you take Both no damage. You. But he is so. still holding a scimitar. That's it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that it's my turn, I will use my bonus action to cast uh, Shalala on my quarterstaff uh, to make it uh, magic. And then I'm going to make my staff shiny and then I'm going to bonk the wolf. Do it. Uh, it's oh, a D8. <laughs> then I will use... Let's see. I'm making sure I use this stuff right. I can use my spellcasting ability. My spellcasting ability is plus three, so okay. Uh, I will roll an actual dice because the yeah, other is... Holy smokes! That's a nat 20! A natural 20? Alright, roll for damage, baby. Um, that All thing right. is dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's uh, D8. Wah-wah. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's a 1, so twice that damage. That's 4 damage. Wait, d- uh, plus your... Wisdom modifier twice. Plus, oh, plus wisdom modifier twice. Because crit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that would be an extra six. So, yes, that I guess ten damage in total. Ten damage. So you you just bring your quarter staff down on this poor little puffer, and he just gets smacked down in the ground, and he's starting to whimper, but uh, he's still kicking. So yeah. Does he kick anyone? No, he does not kick anyone. He he is a metaphor. (laughs) (laughs) But what's the metaphor? It's a figure of speech. All right, sounds good. What is it? This cultist, barely breathing, (laughs) (laughs) is gonna run over to Rakshasa and take a run past. Does he run past us? Oh shoot! Yeah, so he's gonna run right in between both Milo and Boris. (laughs) Um, Boris, would you like to go first, or shall I? Uh, for, for what now? Uh, opportunity attack. Do you want to go first, or shall I? Oh, I mean, you can you can go if you want. You're probably faster than me, technically. <clears throat> um, I only roll 11, so... So, you're gonna try to whiff this guy as he's running past you, but he, he's too good at juking around you. He's swimming around you. With two arrows in his chest. <laughs> 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 Who is barely breathing. <laughs> Boris, would you like to finish him for me? <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, that cool is that. a 16. Alright, you definitely hit him. How much damage did you do? Okay, since I believe I still have the Shalala active. Uh, it's, a, it's a full minute, I think. Yeah, so that would be... Let's see, I'll use that instead. So that's, I think, 8 damage. Eight damage. All right. So as he's running by, you just kind of take a quarter step and trip him. He falls over, and those arrows go straight through his chest. <laughs> Yikes. 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 I don't think right. he had a lot of hit points left. <laughs> and uh, Heckman, it is now your turn. There's still just one. Yeah. Wolf yeah. 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 So I just kind of whiffed 
that the the an, an arrow or two in front of all my friends, and I'm getting a little frustrated. So I'm gonna activate rage on this poor <laughs> puppy. <laughs> on a puppy. You're gonna activate rage. Let me get this straight. You're gonna activate rage when he has like one hit point left. I hate this dog. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna bring my great axe of, of justice down upon his unsuspecting spine. <laughs> All right, roll. <laughs> I got a thirteen. You got a 13? Alright, it definitely hits. Can you roll for um, uh, damage? Uh, so I got a 7 after the normal modifiers, but then with rage, that'll be a 9. Alright, so you take this great axe and just fucking cut that wolf in half. <laughs> and now my Jeez. friends think I'm cool again. <laughs> We're all just staring at you in horror. <laughs> I mean, right, let's so, be real. I cut a wolf's head in half, so I don't think I'm. I, I think we're you used to cut this. Cut it in half. You just punctured its skull with a sword. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it was now you have these three dead bodies just chilling around you, and you don't seem to have alerted anyone else yet. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull my sword out and just kind of clean it off a bit. Do you think anyone else noticed? <laughs> I kind of like here. Well, so <laughs> I, I walk over to Heckman. Still notably very, very rage-fueled. And I say, hey, buddy, sun's getting real low. <laughs> I calm it's in down. The of the day. I calm down a little bit. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay. Now, right, please cool, don't yeah. let that rage get the better of you unless we're in combat, because... <laughs> We might need to sneak around some people. Oh, man. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right, right, cool. So, Zirin, you have finished your rage, but uh, you can enter it again once more before a long rest. Great. So, yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, that cave is still just there. And the campfire is still going. Oh, well, cool. speaking of sneaking, uh, I think... Let's well, not send me in. <laughs> Well, I do have an idea. We have the cultist robes here, uh, and I uh, found out that I can turn into a wolf. I can use druid magic. We can probably sneak in. Okay, I'm one super question. sneaky. One big question. We don't have a dwarf in our party, <laughs> if you've noticed. Right, but... Uh, Does I it really matter if you're a dwarf? If... Well... You the rope. can not be seen. Well, my point being, if we're going to use the dwarf, the cultist robes to sneak in, they have to fit one of us. And currently, I think I'm the only person they fit, and they're a little bit big on me. Uh, a little bit. I think the <laughs> only ones that would fit is, like, you and then, like, Picker, because Picker's, like... Anybody can try them on. <laughs> yeah. The Picker already Picker. has a hood. <laughs> I do already have a hood. It's stylish. Oh. Okay, I will try to slip into the uh, robes and try to pretend to be a, look like a cultist or something. I don't know. <laughs> we can put some of the blood-stained wolf That's fur how... on your face for a beard. Oof. <laughs> okay, I wasn't, thinking, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking I was going to use the blood to uh, match the, mark, uh, the war paint that this dwarf had on his face. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, How do we do? Real quick, before we sneak in, I'm going to try to recover some uh, some bolts that I shot. So I rip one of the bolts out that poor dead man's shoulder. Uh, and then, Mr. DM, sir, I kind of whiffed that other arrow off into the distance. Can I find that? Oh, it's like gone, bro. Oh, also, that no. first arrow is actually going to be a little harder for you to get out because it's it like went all the way through his body. Uh -huh. So you have to dig the feathers out of his body too and stuff. But yeah, you got it. Well, oh, thank you. It's blood stained in there. Yikes! Little chunk of biscuit. <laughs> now it can transfer diseases. <laughs> po um, poison. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go any further, Michael, I would like to say that I would like to use Lay on Hands on myself to heal five hit points. Yeah, go ahead. Just letting it be known. Can everyone type in chat their current hit points while you guys still talk? Like, your current max hit points? 
current Max. Yeah, just so I know them. You managed to pretty replicate that that stuff. And you oh my gosh! Cool. So, how does he do on his uh, disguise? You do look a little short as you're a halfling, Hello? but nah. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're to... good. Blah, blah, blah. I'm Hello? super sneaky, so I'm just gonna kind Caleb of not hear us. Hello, Jared, can you hear us? <laughs> Hello. I Hello, had... Caleb. Okay, cool. I... I disconnected. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So, what are we doing? I'm super sneaky, so I'm, I'm gonna yes. follow you in when you go in and just like try to stick to the shadows. Cool. I would and... like to uh, use my wild shape ability to shape shift into one of the wolves we saw. All right. Would you like the one that is cut in half, or the one with his head split? Away? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I, it doesn't really matter as long as it's pre our encounter. <laughs> All right, cool. So and, you transform uh, into a small, like, gray wolf with a scar on its eye. Cool. And uh, uh, Heckman, would you like to pretend to be a prisoner for us? Ah, <laughs> uh, there's few other <laughs> options. I'm really out of my comfort zone with the <laughs> stealth business. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, here's the thing. You won't have to. You won't have to stealth. All I gotta do is fake wrap these ropes around you so that it looks like you're tied up, and you can easily break out of them when, you know, it's time to kill things. I don't want to be tied up. You won't be actually tied up. It'll just look like it. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, so here's what I'm thinking. Basically, we have a sneaky person who can actually, you know, stealth, and the rest of us are trying to. Fool our way into this dungeon to try to find our uh, medicine cleric. Sounds like a plan. Cuff All me, right. boys. <laughs> okay, so I will just kind of wrap the ropes around his hand a little bit to look like he's tied up, but not actually tie them or anything. And I guess I have an I guess I have a wolf friend now. Hello, wolf. <laughs> wolf. <laughs> <laughs> so when and... you shapeshift, can you speak? <laughs> Uh, I no. cannot. No, oh, cannot. no. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's on us now, boys. <laughs> so, um, with all that ready, are you guys ready to go in? <laughs> I mean, I suppose. Okay, I will lead the way, I guess. <laughs> all right. So, I'm going to say that your marching order is probably, well, like, Milo's in front with Rakshasa. Maybe the wolf is behind. Uh, Rakshasa yeah, I... behind... Rakshasa, like, right behind me, and the wolf standing next to him, and then Pekka, wherever he wants to be. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to stick to the shadows along the right. walls. Cool. So, um, as you enter in, you kind of have to travel down a little bit of, like, you know, just generic cave. But then you, you know, you find a torch that's on the wall, and you follow it, and you kind of enter this, uh, like, cobblestone, like, dungeon-y hallway place. And, uh, you can kind of peer in and see a room with um, about four cultists in it, all kind of sitting around the a campfire, and so like that's in front of you. And then there's also a hallway that continues to the right. Um. So we've got. Uh, can you say that again, just so I can get the yeah, setup so in my head? In front of you, you can kind of see through the door. You can see through a door, and you see these four <laughs> cultists sitting around a campfire that don't know that you're there yet. Uh, okay. But also, to your right, the hallway continues. I might like to go down the hallway first before I have to deal with cultists, because paladins don't like to lie entirely. So are all the cultists sitting in a circle? Uh, yeah. Kind of shooting this shit, just talking cultist shit. Oh, no. So they can <laughs> see cultists. in pretty much every direction. Huh? So they can see in pretty much every direction. There's yeah, not really... It's a pretty dimly lit area, and the campfire provides light that extends almost throughout the entire room. Uh, okay. But definitely, like, so if you went into the room and stayed to the left, it would be a lot darker than if you went into the room and went to the right, where the campfire is. Okay. Yeah. But if I tried to get behind one of them, someone on the other side of the campfire would see me. Unless you were very stealthy. Okay. The answer is yes, you would get caught. <laughs> okay. So I so, might want... Uh, I'm gonna just stick with the the group and go down the hallway. Yeah, I'd like to go down the hallway to the right just to see what else there is. No, I All don't right, really have a you... choice in the matter. Yeah, you're <laughs> following me. 
As you uh, walk down the hall, you get into a, a, a room. You see a room that's leading up with uh, nothing but, I think, two dogs, two wolves in it. Um, and they're kind of sniffing about right now because they notice, hey, someone's here. And so they're going to uh, they're gonna start barking um, pretty loudly. Um, um, animal handling, animal handling, calm, calm. <laughs> What do I have? I have I have a plus one. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> calm, calm down, little Wolfie. Um, yeah, I don't think an eight is gonna work. <laughs> All right. So Milo uh, attempts to calm down these wolves, but they're just not having it. So they're gonna keep barking and stuff. And then uh, one of the cultists from the room that you were just in uh, comes in from another hallway. Uh, so he comes in in front of the group to kind of calm down the wolves. Okay. <laughs> and and he sees Milo. Uh, he also sees the wolf and Rakshasa and Picker. Can you uh, roll stealth? Yep. Uh, Nineteen. All right, and he does not see Picker. Good. <laughs> 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 and so one second, he's just really quick, gonna kind of look around, and he he keeps looking between. Milo and Rakshasa, and then Milo and Rakshasa again, and Milo and Rakshasa, and then he kind of puts his hood down, and uh, he he looks straight at Milo, and he says, <clears throat> he goes, Ah, Adric, you made it back with a prisoner, eh? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, uh, give, <laughs> give me a second to try to translate that, because <laughs> Did he, he call me Ad Adric? Adric. Adric. Yeah, and he says, "Ah, you've made it back with the prison eye." I'll just, I'll just nod, <laughs> just, mm -hmm. and like, like a gruff, a gruff kind of like. Mm -hmm. I sh right. I I'm, shout, "I'm no prisoner," and I'll just kind of like eh, elbow him. Quiet. All right. <laughs> and so this this dragonborn cultist is very fascinated with Rakshasa. He Whoa. walks up to him, and he's kind of like just. Touching his muscles and stuff, and oh. like, oh, I twitch out of oh, excitement. Horns, and he's like, oh, <laughs> "This will be a Get very good out. test subject for us." I squirm uncomfortably. <laughs> Let me lead you back to the back. Our uh, master will want to see him. Okay, and uh, sure. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Um, these guys, uh, they uh lead you. He leads you down a hall, and it, it's just like a really kind of long walk, and you're all like feeling that this is kind of awkward because you don't really know what's going on. And uh, as you're walking, I'd like pick her to do another stealth check. Okay. Well, hi, buddy. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, no. All right, oh, no. so um, this guy kind of, he hears a little bit of noise from the back. Uh, so he kind of, he turns around and he, he looks at my I, I, I ah, kind of like bark in a direction. <laughs> no, no, all right. direction. Just bark. Bigger. So, uh, you know, the guy's just like, he, he, he looks at the dog and kind of shrugs. And then he keeps walking. I'm just gonna pet, I'm gonna pet Boris a little bit <laughs> and continue walking. <laughs> I, I, I wag my tail. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, as you as you get all the way into this this next room that he's finally leading you in, you see that this is like the super chamber of this cultist dungeon. There's all kinds of weird images up on the walls and uh, in the back. There's some jail cells where you can see some skeletons or whatnot. And in the middle, there's this big sacrificial temple lit up with candles. Um, and there's one cultist who's kind of just cleaning some stuff up or whatnot and kind of fiddling through some books. And so this um, cultist that's been following you turns to him and says, Ah, we have another prisoner, yeah? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, so like, oh no, they're German. <laughs> and the other one looks, looks back isn't... and is just as fascinated at, as uh, the previous guy at Rakshasa. So he'll run up to Heckman and he again is kind of feeling up the muscles and he's like 
making um, sure those horns are real and stuff like that. And um, he goes, before... ah, yes, master will be pleased. So, uh, okay, gonna... so he's not the master. Um, I wanted to ask, I'm going to look around the room a little bit. Um, yeah. What's the, uh, how many doors lead into this room, basically? Uh, roll perception. That I have. No, wait, no, I, d I don't have that one. Never mind. Uh, how's a 15? Uh, you see two doors, one of which you came through, the other one also leads back into the hallway you came through. Okay, so they both go back out into that hallway? Yeah. So, can I so take a look the, around the room as well? Yeah, I, yes. I, I, I was also like, as a little Yeah, everybody, everybody else should be allowed to do this, just to hop yeah, in. Yeah, because I'm specifically looking for our dwarf friend, though. I'm yeah. specifically looking for shiny oh, things. Alright, well, both of you roll perception, and I'll let okay, you. Okay, I need to... Oh, natural 20. Ooh. Natural 20. Ooh, um, nice. All right. You kind of look around the room and notice that there's nothing really too valuable because everything is just kind of bookcases and like weird potions and shit. But uh, something in the back of one of these jail cells catches your eyes as you see some really shiny things kind of just sitting in this chest or like a, a, a side pouch um, that's attached to one of these dead skeletons Ooh. in the back there. Ooh. Yeah, and then Ooh. Caleb, would you like to roll perception? Yes, I'm. One of the things I'm trying to figure out is how it exactly works. You uh, use your uh, when you become an animal through wild shape. You keep the, you keep all of your mental scores, so wisdom, charisma, intelligence. But you get all the wolf's uh, physical stats and benefits. So you get advantage on perception checks regarding smell, if that's what. Yeah, you're hearing or smell, but I also don't know like what this guy. Like sounds or I, I see I hear I see if I can hear any uh, bad Scottish accents around. Uh, basically, if you're if you're trying to listen in for like where this dwarf would be, you would get advantage on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, that's I guess on you if if you accept that. Uh, my Alrighty. Yeah. Uh, you want to roll? Yes. Uh, first roll. Bada bing, bada boom. That is a 19, and then that is a 7, so a 19. 19? All right. You really try to listen for, and I quote, a bad Scottish accent. <laughs> and you do not hear any. You just hear bad German accents. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't, but I don't also, like, see any, like, because I do want to just kind of, like, look around the room, too. Oh. Uh, see any bad Scottish accents? <laughs> No. <laughs> Look for any, like, prisoners or, like, yeah, uh, alive. So, among the skeletons, you do see the body of a, um, a you know, a middle-aged dwarf just kind of slumped over in one of these cells. Okay, and he's got a cool. big black beard. A big hmm. black beard. Is he, is he wearing any robes or anything? Yeah, you notice... Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. He's been stripped almost naked. Uh, oh, okay. But he's wearing, like, some rags and shit. Scandalous. Yeah. Scand scandalous. <laughs> Alrighty. So as you have all, or actually, Jared, do you want to look around? Uh, nah. <laughs> Alright, so as you have all just been kind of looking around, these two cultists are feeling up Rakshasa. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wow. The first so... one says, well, let's get him on the table, yeah? And then uh, uh, they both <laughs> gesture to Milo and kind of just take him by the arms and they start moving him towards this table. Um, yeah, at this point, I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna let them walk ahead of me, and I'm gonna look at Boris as I pull my sword out and try to, like, sneaky stab them. <laughs> sneaky right. stab. Sneaky stab. Cool. Okay, uh, I, I kinda see that he is, like, taking I, out I'm his... Sorry, what? I'm, I'm basically letting us know, it's like, now might be the time to fight. <laughs> yeah. So, are, are there only, like, two cultists in here? There's only two cultists in this room. The only doors that lead out lead back to the other cultists, but they're... Basically, we won't get surrounded because there's only yeah, two yeah. doors, and we can guard I, I, those. I was just making sure these we're are a, the only two. Uh, yes, we're in a good so position. I, I, I see that he is, like, starting to pull out a sword, so I kind of take this, and I want to, like, bite at the cultist in front of us, like, at his ankle and kind of, like, hold him there, so, like, whatever attack that, you know, Milo's gonna do should hopefully be easier, kind of thing. Are there any cultists near the wall? Because I could sneak attack one of them. Uh, both cultists are very fascinated by Heckman's throbbing muscles. <laughs> um, okay. However, I believe he just 
have They're range with... that you can do stealth attack. You, or sneak you, can, attack with. you can get a sneak attack within 30 feet of somebody. That I think uh, that that might be Pathfinder. I can't remember what it is in 5e. Mm -hmm. Well, he's hidden right now, so he should get advantage yeah. on the attacks, meaning that he can get his sneak attack. So they're yeah. they're very focused. They're looking away from where Picker would be, uh, and they're like maybe a measly fifteen feet away. Okay. So I basically am just gonna kind of like pull out my sword, signal to everybody to do the killing stuff, and I guess we're all gonna attack at once. Yeah, right. I, I, I bite at the ankles. Now, uh, Michael, I hate to be that guy. Do we get advantage because they don't see it coming? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah! Everyone cool. gets advantage. Alright, uh, I'm going to attack. This is just like a bite, so I'm going to just roll a couple d20s here. Uh, uh, how's a 15? <laughs> great. Cool. So, I'm going to uh, run up behind... Uh, are they both currently touching Heckman? Yes. Yeah, they both. Like got one, on, his arms. one on each of his arms. Oh my! Uh, which one's on his left arm? The the, the, the second one. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna run up behind that one and yeah. uh, try and stab him in the back with my rapier. You better right. not miss. You can roll with it. Right? And then I I and, rolled. Uh, I didn't know what to, to add. I don't know if like since I'm just biting and I'm trying to like keep him here. If I would add just stealth modifier, but I rolled a thirteen straight, so. Uh, well, it be because you're a wolf, if you hit him and succeed, you he then has to make a strength saving throw. Or oh, he goes okay. prone. Because you can trip as a wolf. Gotcha. Fun stuff. Alright, well anyways, so both Milo and Boris have hit these and cultists. So as I, 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 did as I hit the cultist, I also want to like kind of just call out to Heckman and be like, Heckman, kill time! <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so I rolled so that's... a 6 and a 21. Alright, so... yeah, that's good. Uh, wait, wait, so Milo and Boris, which one are you attacking? Um, I imagine I'm hit... I imagine Boris is going for one... Because he it's said that he just... wanted to make sure that I could hit the same one, so... I yeah. imagine we're going after the same guy, so... the guy Alright, right. so I'll say that Milo and Boris are both uh, just tromping away at that left cultist. <laughs> uh, no, Thicker. uh... Just Pickers on the left, we're on the right. Oh yeah, excuse me, that's what I meant. Cool. Yeah. And whichever. And then Heckman, are you doing anything in oh, these? Yeah, few I seconds? will uh, break out and whip out because... my massive great axe. <laughs> that all... he was hiding between the cheeks. <laughs> that no one noticed <laughs> between my clenched buttocks. Well, in your no, prison yeah. wallet. <laughs> <laughs> You still had it. You had it equipped, but you were also tied up, so nobody really bothered with you. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Are you going to do anything with it? I'm just going to impress people. They seem so <laughs> enthralled with my muscles. Now I'm going to take a swing at the left one. At the left one. All right, and he doesn't see you coming, so you can roll with advantage. Oh yeah. Yeah. Surprise attack. <laughs> oh no. A twelve. A twelve. Uh huh. Good enough. Okay, All right. Good. So this cultist on the left. Uh, gets stabbed in the small of the back, and then that kind of forces him to, to lean back. And then uh, Heckman kind of swings around with his axe and cuts the guy's head clean off. <laughs> and this guy on the right gets bit in the leg by a wolf and then stabbed through the side. So they both <coughs> fall over and collapse. We didn't even have to roll damage, guys. <laughs> hey, cool. And then through all of this commotion, because they're screaming, obviously. Well, the one whose head cut off, maybe not so much. What? We, the just other did one, we did this the within less than... We did this less than in six seconds, Michael. Yeah, but so that, that one on the right, you know, he got bit and let out a very loud exclamation. Yeah. And then he was also stabbed, which let out another very loud exclamation. No, I uh, stabbed him in the lung, so he can't... Uh, okay, yeah, he can make noise. So first, you first hear uh, a door open up in like the wall in front of you above these jail cells that you did not see before. It was like a hidden door. That's and it fair. opens That's up. Fair. <laughs> and the cultist stands up there and he looks down at uh, Rakshasa and he puts his hood down and he says, I know you. <laughs> uh, I assume we roll for initiative. Uh, no, so actually he's gonna just gonna stand up there for a little bit. Um, How far away is he? Bar. He's, he's behind some bars, uh, mm. but I'd say, okay. like, Pythagorean distance. 
He's going to be maybe 70 feet away. Okay. I'm going to pull out my short bow and try and shoot him in the leg. Incapacitate right. him. Go ahead. That's going to be a very high AC. <laughs> oh, yikes. What? That's a natural one. Oh, All right. gosh, dude. Oh, I hate these rolls today. Damn, you <laughs> take out your bow and you just pull that arrow back. <laughs> but you pulled it too far, and when you shoot it, the bow kind of hits your ear and you take a point of damage. <laughs> God damn it. So it like it, it, you pull your bow, and instead of letting go with the string hand, you let go of the bow again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this cultist has just witnessed this. And he kind of pulls and shakes his head. And he says, you will all surely die today. And two warhorse skeletons appear on either sides of you. Roll for initiative. Oh, oh. there it is. <laughs> that was quick. That was quick. <laughs> Wait, these are undead. <laughs> okay, my initiative is seven. Here, let me type it. <laughs> Guys, I rolled. Nice. Yay! I gotta be honest. I think my... <laughs> Like all three initiatives in this campaign for me have been eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lucky number for you, I guess. So good. Fourteen seven. All right, Milo, you can make the first move. So there's one on each side of you, each fifteen feet away. Um. Okay. I've got my sword out, and I recognize what this creature. I, I assume that I can tell this is an undead creature, right? Yes. It's it's made of bones. <laughs> <laughs> can I steal okay, I'd like bones? to. I would like to run up to it and swing. Um. I'm gonna run up to the one on my right. And just kind of like bring my sword up and try to like just I'm no I'm like three feet tall so I'm just gonna try to swing at its knees basically and cut it out from under it. All right, go ahead, roll for that. Um, Papa, how's a twelve? A twelve. So um, you're gonna kind of swing at it and, and just barely miss that kneecap as it Dang kind it. of rears up and makes a, a neighing noise, but it's a skeleton, so it's really creepy. <laughs> it's kind of got the echo effect on it kind of thing. Reverb. Yeah. Would you like to do anything else? I mean, I've made my attack and I've moved 15 of 25 feet. I don't think I have much else I can do. Nothing else? Alrighty. So it is now the Warhorse Skeleton's turn. Hi, Warhorse! So, first off, the one right next to Milo is gonna stay next to him, but move around you to be, um... Like uh, around all of us. No, 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 no. He's moving around so that he's in between you and the cultist, who's up okay. in like this balcony area, and gotcha. uh, he's gonna roll to hit you. Okay. Uh, what's your AC? Sixteen. Sixteen. Or... Yeah, he misses. Uh, he's gonna yeah! take one of his big ass hoofs and he hits you right on the dress plate, but it just doesn't do anything, and you're like, cool. It pushes me back a bit, but I don't take any damage. Cool. And then the second warhorse is uh, um, trained to serve its master, so it's going to run up to Rakshasa, and it's going to try to attack you. Rakshasa, what's your AC? Uh, 13. All right, and it also misses. What does it do specifically? <laughs> it it uh, has, um, you know, it tries to come down and chomp you with its big-ass horse teeth, but... Uh, misses. <laughs> it, had a, it didn't uh, remember how short its neck was. Yeah, basically. It's been a while since it's been all together. <laughs> cool. Um, so, I guess Heckman or Picker, you can choose who goes first. I don't care. Which has, has, the, uh, has the higher, higher initiative? Higher. Yeah. I have a three. I have a all modifier right, of negative one. <laughs> all right, Picker, go first. <laughs> okay, uh... So, how close am I to these? Well, so orcs? one is about 10 feet away, and the other one is 15 feet away. Or no, excuse me. One is 5 feet away, and one is 10 feet away. Okay. 10 feet on your uh, left, 5 on your right. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to yell my signature catchphrase that everyone has definitely heard before, I swear. Which is? I'm going to steal your bones! <laughs> and then I'm going to stab the one that's closer with my rapier. All right, please roll for that. No. Uh, that's going to be a 14. 14, all right, you hit him. Can you roll for damage? Yeah. Uh, 1d8. Where's my d8? It's that one. It's going to be a 9. 9? All right, so you're going to... Um, and then a rapier does piercing damage, yeah? Yes, they do. All right, so you're going to just poke this guy right in the joint of his knee. 
and he lets out a really, really dismayed whinny as that happens, and uh, kind of runs a little bit around in his little area. <clears throat> and now Heckman. All right, I am going to slap my great axe on this closer horse that's five feet away. All right, roll that. Uh, nine. Nine? <laughs> Alrighty. So you're gonna take that big-ass great axe of yours, and you're gonna try to just chop him, but you barely just get right in between his legs. And that's not as uh, sad for a horse, because he has two pairs of legs. So yeah. Huh. So you miss. I was... Yeah, okay. Boris, <laughs> it's your turn. You miss. Hello. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So, uh, where where are the two war horses uh, in relation to uh, my friends and allies? Uh, one is ten feet to the left of the majority of the group, but also five feet away from uh, Milo, and one is five feet away from the majority of the group. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go help uh, Milo with uh, his war horse, um, and since he is my ally, uh, as a wolf, I have act tactics. You, you have advantage. Means, yep, I have an advantage on any attack rolls, and I'm going to bite at him because the bones are good. I am dog. The bones I are am good. dog. <laughs> cool. All right, All right. Cool. Yep. Okay. Yep. Ciao. That is a uh, 12 and advantage. That is a 7. Does 12 hit? A 12. So you're going to. Uh, just try to nip at its at its leg, uh, but it's gonna just rear up again and make another bony win- winny sound. Yeah. We both right. have missed this. We both rolled twelves on this guy. <laughs> Yikes! All right, and now back to you, Milo, with the news. Cool. Um, as he like you know rears up to winny at uh, our my little dog friend, I'm just gonna try to stab him up in his rib cage, I guess. All right, go for it, man. Like, where do you aim with skeletons? Oh boy. Um, ba, ba, ba. 24. To hit. All right. And um, I would like to Divine Smite as well. <laughs> sure. Um, what kind of damage does your sword do? Um, it does slashing damage. Okay, cool. So then roll for damage and tell me how Smite does. It's, okay, it's just so like X D8, right? It is 3D8 because it is an undead creature at a first Holy level spell. Shit. Yes. All right, roll. <laughs> okay, so I'll do the physical damage first in case it has any resistances or anything. Yeah, go ahead. So it is a total of six physical damage, and then... All right. Oh, boy, I get to reroll all of those. Um, six. It's a total of 20 damage. Total of 20 damage? All right. It's so a it, boy. With a nice stab to the rib cage. You hit it right in the metaphorical heart, and uh, nice. <laughs> your your sword just slips through its vertebrae, and it shudders, and the lights of its eyes go off, and all the bones. As my sword just kind of lights up and ching. Yep. And, uh, Take that. So he died. It. <laughs> Yay! I killed something. Cool. Guys, I'm was... pal- I did what paladins are supposed to do. <laughs> so this other war horse then is gonna move, and so he's gonna again try to uh, hit Rakshasa. So he, um, and Rakshasa, what's your AC again? Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. So he's definitely gonna hit you. Uh, he takes his hoof and he slams it down on you for a total of eleven points of damage. Oh, funny. Holy. Okay, I'm less alive than I was before. Still right. technically alive. And um, so then before Picker moves, uh. Two more cultists run in each one in each of those doors that's behind you. So if you're in the middle of the room, it's an, a good uh, 20 feet back to the wall, and then the doors are each five feet away. So those are like the legs of the triangle. Finally, something I know how to fight. <laughs> and now, uh, so they ran in, and now Picker, it's your turn. Okay, uh, are they on either side of the room, or both of them at the same door? So they're on both doors which are okay. both on the same wall. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 
So I'm going to run over to one of them. I don't think it matters which one. Uh, uh, pick your favorite. And I'm going to run over to the one on the right. Okay, and then I'm going to try and stab him right in the right in the <coughs> jaw with my rapier. Like, go up through the chin, kind of. Okay. Do it. <laughs> it's uh, 17 plus 320. Uh, yeah, okay, you hit him. Can you roll for damage? Yep. It's going to be seven. Seven damage. All right, so uh, you, you poke him, like, right in the bottom of the chin, uh, but then he kind of grabs your sword and stuff and moves it out and reveals that he's a dragonborn. But he definitely did take damage, but you didn't go straight through his jaw like you had hoped to. Darn. Yeah. The scales deflected it. Oh. Heck, man. What you up to, homie? Uh, so did I fall over on the horse's attack, or was it just a no, good, you're good. solid hoof to the chest? You just got hooked. <laughs> All right. There's like two just hoof marks on your chest. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, those aren't supposed to be there. No, so they're not. <laughs> this horse is giving me trouble, and I have more beef with the cultists than I do a big old stinky stack of bones. So I'm also going to run over <laughs> to roundabout where Picker just went. <laughs> And I'm going to take another right. great axe swing at my homeboy. My homeboy cultist McGee. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. I got a 17 that time. A 17? All right, you hit him. How much damage? Good question. Good question. Nine damage. Nine damage. All right, so you hit this cultist with your great axe, and he <coughs> falls right over, and he looks at you and says, Deeplings, come, and then dies. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's unfortunate. All right, and now Boris. It's -a me. Well, uh, this pile of bones is all done, but we still got one more that I need to steal the bones of. <laughs> so I'm gonna go try to bite that one. Unfortunately, I do not have advantage. So uh, let me let me roll. Ha ha ha. That's a Kill it. that's a seven. Oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> All right, so, that, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Who are you biting? Uh, the other warhorse. Okay, yeah. So you're gonna try to bite that uh, skeleton, but you you just miss again. You just don't. He, he got you again with the whole pick his legs up thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. I'm shorter now. Back to my. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I guess I'll just run over and help uh, Boris, because why not kill the skeleton horse? So I'll run the ten feet required of me, and just, again, bring my sword and just try to cut his legs out from under it or something like that. Do it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Natural roll. one. Natural one, oh, so. Oh, so you're no. going to try to sweep and you, you fall prone. I'll take it. <laughs> that's better than that's better than what could have happened. You trip Would you on like to get back up the with cave. the remaining movement you have? Ah! <laughs> um, actually, on the ground. actually can't, uh, wait, that eats up my remaining movement? Well, you spent 10, and then you need half your movement of 25 uh, to get back up. So, I, I will spend the rest of my movement to stand back up. <laughs> Alright, so then you stand back up. Cool. In front and of now the it's horse. the horse skeleton's turn. Yeah, I mean it's better than being prone because prone means they get advantage. All right, what's your AC? Uh, mine, sixteen. Well, doesn't matter because he misses you. <laughs> he takes his hoofs and he has like both of them and he's gonna try to thunderclap you in between them. But he misjudged you because you're a halfling and he got right above your head and he looks Woo! very clearly dismayed. <laughs> dismayed. <laughs> I love how emotional these ske these skeletal horses are. Yeah. And now, uh, so these cultists are now gonna their turn. And so one of them is right in between Picker. Oh no, one of them's dead. So never mind. The other one. Uh, is 10 one feet of them away died from Picker and Heckman. So he's gonna run up to Picker and use uh, his scimitar to hit you. And so he misses. It goes right over you. <laughs> Jeez, just whiffing it today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Picker, it's up to you now. The dice don't like right. us. <laughs> so there's the one cultist left, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How close is he to me? He's right in front of you. Okay. So I'm gonna try stabbing him. Can I? Uh, hmm. 
I'm going to try and stab him through the left nipple. Mm. Very, Very specifically. specifically. <laughs> All right, roll for that, baby. That's going to be a uh, 12. A 12. All righty. You hit him. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. His uh, left nipple is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eight. Eight? Yeah. All right. So you, you stab that boy in the left nipple. And now he's bleeding from the nipple, which I would assume is not very good. <laughs> cool. So uh, then he's Less just going to, um, you know, he's there. And now, Heckman, it's your turn. All right. I see what my pal Picker is going for. He's going for our <laughs> signature move, the nip slips. Are you going to go for the right? So I'm going to take one of my javelins, and I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> Shove it at his right nipple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what you roll? Uh, great news! I got an eight. Eight. So you take your javelin, and I'm sorry, did you throw it at his nipple? No, I, I stabbed no, it at his nipple. Oh, okay. So you're gonna try? You're just so focused on that nipple, <laughs> you're not really paying attention to anything else. And you kind of trip a little bit as you're running up, and you just you don't hit. Ah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, would you like to move or anything? Uh, yes, I use the rest of my turn to say, "I'm sorry, Picker." <laughs> so, nice. Uh, I hate you what, what so is much. The, what is this signature move called? The nip slips. All right, <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. So um, uh, Boris? now it's Boris's turn. Oh, avenge me! <laughs> avenge you? You're up still. I I know, but, uh, but there's still another get... bone boy. All Let's right. Please kill the bone boy. <laughs> okay, but now that you're here, I have advantage. Yeah, advantage. <laughs> Good night. Let's see if I can actually hit this thing. <laughs> you just gotta well, roll that's an one first. Please don't <laughs> roll that one. again. Yeah, please roll again. Oh my goodness, <laughs> and that's a four. Ah! Oh! So that's that's an eight, but I don't think an eight hits. Good grief! You with nope. your dog teeth once again get pulled <laughs> by the horse as he lifts his front legs. If you heard that, I'm throwing my dice away. <laughs> you really gotta stop doing that. <laughs> All right, this my horse, lot's back to you. This horse is just like prancing on his hind legs, so I'm gonna like try to. I'm just gonna like run a little bit closer to get at his hind legs so they can't lift those up and try to swing at it. <laughs> Alright, you, so you run underneath him and you're at his behind him is hind legs. Fifteen! Uh, Fifteen to hit! Alright, roll for damage. Thank <laughs> god! <laughs> Gosh, dang it! Six damage. Hey, it's something. Alright, so you, you swipe at the legs of this guy and uh, he's clearly damaged, and you can see kind of the ghostly lights in his eyes flicker a little bit, but then he doesn't die. Yeah, I noticed. I'm literally rolling the straight. minimum amount I can on my die. So, uh, this time, the warhorse skeleton's a little mad at this dog who keeps trying to nip his legs. He so got he's mad gonna... at the one who actually hurt him? He doesn't want to turn around. That's too much work. <laughs> he has four <laughs> legs to trip over. And so what is, is your AC as a wolf? wolf. Uh, my AC as a wolf is 13, so just one more than my All AC. All right, so he manages to hit you, and he deals a whopping uh, 10 points of damage. Oh, oh boy. Oh, my God, you're still a wolf. He just hits you on the head with his hook. So, yeah, I, I am at 1 HP. <laughs> oh, right. no. And now, well, um... It's basically temporary. Like, when you run out of that, you go back to being your druid form with all your health back to normal, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I'm going to be doing very soon. <laughs> so, uh, this last cultist, who, who currently is only left nipple, uh, he's gonna try to whiff you with his scimitar again, Mr. Picker. Okay. And, uh, he's gonna, again, just miss you with that scimitar. <laughs> Probably because his left nipple is bleeding. <laughs> Alrighty. And then, um... I'm sorry, one second. 
Yeah, and then Seeker can go. Who can? Gert. Gert. Gert <laughs> can go. It's Gert's <laughs> turn. Okay. Gert. Okay. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to take out my rapier. I'm going to try and do our signature move by my lonesome. Oh. Gonna try and stab him right in the right nipple. All right, go for it, baby. It's gonna be a nineteen. Oh yeah, you definitely hit him. Okay, <laughs> and another damage. eight damage. All right, so as you hit his right nipple, he flees out and goes, oh, and dies. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why we do the signature move. <laughs> Does it just consistently make that noise no matter who it is? It's pretty, it's surprisingly Wait, consistent. Sometimes it's got some coughs terrace. first, so it sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> we stab the Tarrasque. Oh. All right, all right, all right. Good. So now it is Heckman's turn. There's still one skelly boy. Uh, I'm going to shoot a crossbow at it from a safe distance. <laughs> Do it. All uh, right. Oh, and I forgot while I was previously using the crossbow, I had proficiency. So I'm going to remember that now, and I get 17. Oh. Yeah, that might help you. Oh, yeah, shoot. I have not been using proficiency for my rapier. Yeah. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Is this why everyone's been missing? I mean, the enemies have been missing, too. I don't think uh, they're true. forgetting to use proficiency. <laughs> 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 All right, so did you hit it? Or what I, did, what's the number? did I hit it? I think yes. Uh, I got Michael. a 17, yeah. Yeah, that hits it. We're all for damage. Alright. Uh, zero means 10, right? Yes, yes. zero okay. means the full So 10. I got a 9. nine Alright, so you shoot this uh, crossbow bolt right as the war horse kind of turns towards you and it goes straight in his eye <laughs> and he collapses uh. and makes another whinny noise. <laughs> and I use the rest of my turn to say <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> all right, and so then uh, your attention is drawn towards the uh, cultist who was like up in the balcony area, who has just jumped down a whopping like thirty feet and lands in a superhero pose. Does he take fall damage? Uh, I'm not really bad on the knees. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, and then Does so. He... <laughs> What? Does he grunt? What? Does he look like he, he got grunts. hurt? <laughs> I'm a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and then, so he's going to be about uh, 10 feet away from uh, Boris and Milo. So he's going to turn to, uh, excuse me, Boris, the wolf, and uses, uh, he casts Sacred Flame. Uh, so oh. please use a dexterity saving throw. On oh, who? On Boris. Okay. So that's a minus one. So I'm picking a different die now. Wait, how do you have a minus one? You're a wolf. Oh, right. As Right, I get a plus two now. <laughs> ah! Roll. Fifteen plus two. All right, seventeen. All right. So nothing happens. Yep, you dodge out of the way of the fire. Enjoy. And this nice. this cultist is still there, and now it's Boris's turn. He's about ten feet away from me. All right, he's about ten feet away from me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so then I use my power, like he u like he uses kind of the sacred flame or whatever. There's kind of flames around me, but it misses. But if he's blinded for one moment, there's a wolf. Another moment. There's an eight foot furball. <laughs> uh, <Hello. laughs> uh, what does he do? That is a good question. Uh, we'll find out next episode. Uh, no. Next time on uh, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I cast Shalala and then I'm going to just swing at him with my quarterstaff. Alright, go ahead. Since this one is a little more successful now. Roll that. 13 plus 5, that is 18. Alright, you definitely hit him. Roll for damage. Yeet! That is a 10 damage. 10 damage. damage. Alright, so you bonk this cultist on the head, and he's, you know, mumbles in 
his shitty German accent and uh, kind of staggers back a little bit, but he's pretty much okay. And now it's my last turn. Awesome. Um, I'm going to probably, after seeing the horse fall down in front of me, I'm going to turn to the cultist and run up and try to stab him too, because why not? This is All what right, I do, do now. It. Yeah. Oh, um, as, well, um, before I get to him, I'm casting Searing Smite, so the next successful hit I get within the next minute will do something cool. Uh, and I am need to roll. God, ah, natural one. <laughs> Jeez. All right. You and your sword come up to the cultist, and you're like, I'm going to get you. And you swing, <laughs> and you trip, and it kind of fumbles around, and you, you didn't hit me. No. And no. you kind of looks at you and he spits at you. Dice jail. Dice jail. Go go away, you stupid dice. <laughs> Bad. And now, Picker, it's your turn. Huh. Okay. How far away is he from me? Um, 25 feet. Okay. I'm going to run up directly behind him. Uh, Nothing personal, try. kid. The, directly behind him <laughs> is a wall. Sorry, bro. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to run up next to him, try and stab him in the leg. We have him cornered. <laughs> I don't want him dead. I want to ask him questions. Do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to run up and try and stab him in the leg and then try and disengage. All right. Okay. I'm going to try and non-lethal stab him in the leg, try and All cripple right. him. Roll for that, my bad. Okay. Uh, that's going to be 18 plus my double proficiency and rapiers yeah, yeah, plus my three, up. whatever. I don't know. <laughs> oh uh, I don't know how proficiency for weapons works. Uh... And then 1d8 plus 3 damage. That's going to be 6. 6 damage on him? Yep. All right, so you, you poke him uh, non-lethally right in his stomach, right above his belly button. I was going for the leg. Oh, the leg. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you poke him right in the leg. And no, you still get the belly button. <laughs> and he, he lets out a shriek as that happens, but he's still standing there. And now, Rakshasa, it is, it is your turn. All right, so Six if I heard three. correctly, this guy came in and said he knew me? Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to activate Rage. <laughs> oh, no! I'm going to activate <laughs> Reckless Attack. <laughs> Oh, oh no! I'm no. gonna come at his bloodline. <laughs> All right, do it. So I'm gonna I charge will at him. Bloodline. I'm gonna All charge right. at him, screaming the whole time. <laughs> and I'm wielding my great axe high above my head, and I'm gonna swing it right down, hopefully dead through his skull. All right. So much for not, not lethally, damage. right? <laughs> I, I was a. I mean, I hate to be the one that's also on this train, but I've got a spell up so that if I hit him, it'll probably also kill him. All right. Okay. I got 18 for the attack roll. Oh, wow. Okay. Roll for damage. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, 15 damage. Ouch. And this is not non-lethal? This is lethal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You fucking, like... Dig that great axe right into his chest. <laughs> no, I was aiming over. for his skull. No, his head, yeah. Oh, well, he yeah, dead? It, 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 just, it, it is. It, 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 it goes down to his, his chest. chest. Oh. It's like it went through like his throat. Oh, that's yeah. good. Oh, oh, is he dead? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so he fucking falls over. What was that for? It kind of lodged in him as you hold on to it. Well, this is unfortunate because now my spell is wasted. <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, there you go. You now stand in a room full of bones and dead cultists. Not that I have any love for cultists, quite the opposite really, but that was quite a lot of anger for just one guy. I, uh, I have, have my reasons. Um, so while they're discussing this, I'm gonna go over to that, uh, dwarf in the cage and see if he's still alive. All right, you go over to the dwarf, and you notice that he is dead. Oh, he died. It? Yeah. In the cage. Yeah, he's well. I mean, he's dead in the cage. Yes, I don't. I can't tell you if he died. In the cage. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, that's unfortunate, guys. <laughs> well, we can still bring him back. Or uh, burial. So there was another cage that had a skeleton in it yeah, with some shiny that. stuff. Yes, is that do. cage locked? Yes, it is. Okay. Can I use my thieves' tools and try and lock pick it? No, sorry. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, this, uh, this lock requires a key, like Skyrim. <laughs> I also have a double proficiency in thieves' tools, so it's going to be... Uh, dex roll plus four. Dex roll yep. plus four. Yeah, so it's going to be a plus seven, damn. Yeah, well, 17 yeah, total. Be 17 total. All right, you, you unlock that cage. All right. What is in that pouch chest what thing? What is in that pouch? All right, so you're going to uh, find inside there, you're going to pull out a little bit of uh, some gemstones. And a magic table. Yeah, there you go. So um, so you get... Oh, shoot. Where's my gemstone generator thing? <laughs> oh, no, Michael lost it. You got a few gemstones out of there, each looking like they're worth about... 15 gold pieces, and you also find um, a trinket, which is a, a tiny sketch portrait of a goblin. Okay, uh, so portrait of goblin, and uh, how many gemstones was it? Uh, like four gemstones, each looking like they're about 15 gold pieces. Of worth. Okay. It's the portrait of the goblin. Have you seen this man? All right. So I'm gonna put all of that in my backpack. Sounds good. Uh, I kind of look around the room. Is there like anything else? Like they kept <sighs> mentioning like experiments and such. Is there anything around the room that kind of looks like experiment stuff, or is it just like a table in the middle? There's an exceedingly bloody table in the middle that is very clearly used for some sort of uh, uh, sacrifices or whatnot. There's a big ass pentagram drawn on it, and there's like latches for where someone's arms and legs would be hooked into. Gotcha, but and, nothing really else. Uh, no, mostly bookcases, some potion making stations, and stuff like that. Hey, Michael, I'd like to use my detect evil ability. <laughs> Go ahead. Does it ping evil? <laughs> you get a big ass vibe from this table, desecrated <laughs> style. Yeah, that's what I thought. And also, you get a big ass vibe from uh, this co last cultist you just killed, desecrated style. Gotcha. Um, you said that he came out of a door that's like all the way up there. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, I'm going to take a look at it and try to figure out if I can find a way into that room. <laughs> all right. Do I need to roll anything? Yeah. Or... Roll perception. Sorry. You're good. I probably should have told you that. Hello? What the hell? Hello? What the fuck? <laughs> what oh my goodness! It's. it's... Was that Wait. you, David? No, oh, that's that was me. That's, that was someone else. Oh, I got um, rid of that. was me. Part. Apparently, I don't. Like the side of my car uh, Michael, door fi opened. Uh, oh. 15. 15? Alright, so you're gonna notice um, some stairs leading down from that balcony. And they kind of go behind a bookcase to your right. Ooh, I would like to climb upwards. Right. Or I would like I would like to poke my head out, like climb up and poke my head over the bookshelf and be like, "Hey guys, I found stairs." Yep. So you find the door. stairs. <laughs> Secret door. <laughs> yeah, since right out, yeah. right, I'm probably, right over there, I will also follow. We should probably explore, and I would like to not go alone in case there's more of these guys. I'll follow Thank on you. up. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Cool. Okay, so I would like to go into that room where the big bad came out of. <laughs> Alrighty, so as you go in there, um, it's a pretty small room. Uh, just kind of like a little bit of a study. There's some more bookcases and a table with uh, a bunch of papers on it that are kind of stacked evenly, and then one that is alone right in the middle of the table. Um, okay. And also, if you kind of peer back behind the desk or whatnot, you see a, a hallway that um, you can see light coming out of, like, natural light. Ooh, okay. Oh, cool. Well, first things first, I would like to read the thing that's on his... I would like to read the papers on his desk, starting with the one that's by itself, and then I'll work through the others. All right. So you start with the one that's by itself, and you realize that you do not understand this language. Wait, what language is it? <laughs> uh, it know. is in Abyssal. 
Uh, okay, then, yeah, I, I, so I should have said I have three languages, and it's not one of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got nothing on this. <laughs> cool. Does any All the papers are in the thistle. I just, I passed them to Boris. You understand this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know a whistle. Uh, you there, big old fella. Uh, looking at Hackman if he's oh over gosh. here. Did, did, I, did I Hackman I follow? Did I? I mean, your call. <laughs> well, just standing down there. Okay, I think I, I will join them. But before I, did I do... Invite every <laughs> I did invite the whole party to come upstairs with me. Now that you mention it, um, can I recover my bolt that I shot through that skeleton boy's eyeball? Uh, yeah, sure. Awesome. All right. So I'm following them. I I received this message from Boris. <clears throat> no. <laughs> what? No, I cannot read the scribbly ash paper. <laughs> <laughs> But it's in a vessel. I speak foreign. Do I speak other things too? Yes, you speak no, your vessel. I speak infer <laughs> no, I speak infernal. Oh, oh Mike, I'm that's the wrong one. Oops, it's an infernal. <laughs> 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 Whoa, I can read this. Yeah, Suddenly infernal, all the words come together in his mind. <laughs> infernal is in infernal is for like devils, abyssal is for demons, the you know, chaotic ones. My bad. It's in. You're, you're okay. <laughs> would you like to read it? Yes, I would like to read it out loud to the All party. Right. You read it, it and it voice. says. <laughs> you read it, and um, it's it's a fairly short note, and it just says, um, "We have seen the captive in Arboresh, leaving town, heading east," and then it's signed. <clears throat> but a very sloppy signature and a crest which is a, a skull and one of its eyes has like a wolf's paw in it ooh spooky yeah. so is this Arbor seems like a little we... sorry go ahead were we ever in Arborish Michael? yeah so that was the city that you started in. oh okay yeah. hmm wait and they called him the captive yeah. I, I look back at Heckman. It's like, yeah. He said he knew you. <laughs> Is this you? Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> I, I, I just pass him the rest of the papers. It's like, uh, quickly skim through all of these, please. I quickly skim through all of them, please. Can he roll perception, please? Nineteen. Nineteen. All right, as you're skimming through all of these, you notice the city of Mercer in uh, Dalekin, which is the southeast region of the country, being mentioned quite a lot. And uh, other than that, just some general notes about um, odd experiments that deal with the underworld and uh, demons. But nothing that is super comprehensible. Yeah, there's uh, not much here. A bunch of creepy stuff about uh, stuff. Um, but this, the city named Mercer <laughs> gets mentioned a lot. I think we should check that out. Maybe. How far away is that from us? Uh, so you would know that the country of Dalekin is at least three weeks' journey away from you right now. I feel like we have. A, I feel like we don't have that kind of time, unfortunately. <laughs> Also, uh, one thing we might add, Michael, is we might add a channel in here that is, like, important documents. That's so really we don't smart. have to scroll up for the map. <laughs> Stop sending so many memes. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, that sounds like a really smart idea. But the memes! <laughs> we have other channels for that! <laughs> Alrighty. So. Okay. So this seems like... Office. This seems like a pretty important room. Given that the baddie, the big baddie, was just sitting in here all by his lonesome, yeah. uh, there wouldn't happen to be anything around the room that of any value. Roll perception, baby. It's gonna be a uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, you notice that 
of all the bookcases, one looks a little more structured than the others. Like all the books are a lot more straight. Everything's a little more organized. And that's it. Any of the books have interesting titles? Nope, they're all kind of uh, just plain spines. One one is labeled a uh, lusty Argonian maid. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and are they all uh, are they all exactly straight, or is one poking out? Uh, you see them all pretty much <coughs> straight. Yeah, they're all straight. Okay. Well, I suppose if it's got a lot of creepy stuff, we might take some of these papers back to the temple along with the uh, cleric, and uh, I'm sure they can deal with these. All right. Sounds good to me. All right. All right. I guess so, like we can still, like uh, a path coming out behind the desk where you can see some natural light coming in. Well, that looks like an exit. But my horse, my horse is on the other side. <laughs> oh, we can take a quick look here, real quick, I suppose. True. <laughs> you don't take a look. <laughs> All right. So you peek out of this hallway where the natural light's coming from, and you find yourself standing right on top of the entrance that you came in from. Oh, okay. Oh, oh it's the Skyrim it's door. door. It's a little <laughs> bit. Uh, there's enough of like a slope for you to kind of slide down safely. It's cool. a Skyrim door that always leads back to the entrance of the dungeon. <laughs> yep. Uh, I slide down safely. Alright. I so. slide down dangerously. <laughs> no, <Baker! laughs> I would like to look at that bookshelf a little bit more that's all straight and pretty before I go. <laughs> Alright, roll perception. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. It's you notice bookshelf. that they are all books. <laughs> uh, can are any are any of them in languages that I understand? Uh, if you want to rifle through some, sure. Right. I like I like the fancy things. Does there knowledge his, is knowledge history going to get me anywhere here? By the way, knowledge history will get you nowhere. How many books would you like to rifle through? Uh, let's go for three. All right. You just find a bunch of books uh, that are all written in some language that you can't understand, and it's not infernal. Um, and that's pretty much it. I okay, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to assume it's not written in uh, halfling or giant. No. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, just for your guys' notes, I have which languages you know written down, so I'll let you know if you can read something. Okay. Thank you. And with that, I will slide down as well. Oh my goodness. So I guess I, by myself, uh, will go back, uh, collect the papers from the desk, find, <laughs> the key, find the keys to the cage, and carry the body of the cleric out of the cage. <laughs> as you rifle through the papers, the remaining papers on the desk, uh, you do find the key in them for all of the cells. It's like a whole key ring. Yeah. Um, and so then, yeah, sure, you can go and pick up the dead dwarf. <laughs> um, having having remembered that I left a dead dwarf, that we sh wanted to bring the dwarf inside, may I climb up the slope to try to get my friend, to try to help uh, my friend? You can but, roll but it's like, right, that. but right yeah, as he I remembers that, I'm like coming out of the cave. <laughs> <laughs> I got athletics. <laughs> I mean, do you want to climb up? I rolled a 10. <laughs> All right, you, you do not successfully climb up. It's Dang it! It's steep. Dang it! Curse my curse my low rolls. So Boris, you're still up on top with this dead body. Well, yeah, I, I'm just kind of, and then I'm kind of. At this point, I'm down below. Is about if it's about the same distance, I'm just gonna head out. Kind of, uh, I might head out the main entrance. Check. Well, there's the still one. the the guys in that one room. Yeah, there might still be cultists, and there are wolves. Well, it's like the way I kind of figured it is like those are the ones we just fought. Well, yeah, but there were more the than we fought. All I know is I wouldn't go back that way. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all aren't <laughs> here to tell me. That's true. Do as you please. And I figure it's easier to just walk out the cave with the body, so... All right, so where are you going? Uh, back through the main entrance. All right, so as you walk back through the main entrance, you can hear the growling of uh, two wolves as you're walking down that hallway. Where'd the wolves come from? 
They were the we ones just we were the wolves. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the wolves that what? Two wolves we that ran never into them killed. the first time. There's oh, that's right. Okay, never. Yeah, I. So I did forget about the wolves. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I changed my mind and go the other way. <laughs> All right. So you yeet out of there, and uh, now you're on top of the cave entrance. Oh, yeah, I, I I yell up to him. Hey, why don't you just roll the body down? Get any more? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look at him and be like, respect for the dead. <laughs> well, of course. Uh, well, I guess, Picker, if you want to catch him, I uh, just toss him in. Ah! I step out of the way and let him go right past. The dead body just plumps onto the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you hear a few I'm, cracks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just groan and pick and try to pick him up and put him on my pony so that he, we don't have to carry him the whole way back. Uh, there I you guess go. respect for the dead. <laughs> All right, so now what would you like to do? I vote we go back and hope maybe this is their cleric. Wait, do we know that this is their cleric? I mean, you guys never inspected him. <laughs> I, I did. I asked yeah, if he was I alive. Yeah, I did. That yeah, you didn't like inspection. go through. You didn't go through like his belongings. I asked He's about it, but I got drowned yeah. out by everything else. <laughs> oh, yeah. You said you that he find, was... you, you find a little signet of Apollo. Okay, okay, yes, this is the cleric. Okay, so let's go like back now. was like you were inspecting what he was wearing, and he was like, no, he's naked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember? Yeah. Anyway, let's go back, guys. <laughs> well, we found the cleric. <laughs> it didn't end well. All right, so you Actually, travel back. Um, would you like um, to, like, take a rest, maybe? Um, Before we go back, I would like to point out, maybe it's best not to leave the cultists alive in their dungeon with their, you know, very evil, sacrificial temple. We should probably That's a good fix point, it. especially if they're going to be taking prisoners. Right. That's true. Um, who votes that we go back inside? <laughs> Just uh, a little bit of cleanup duty. I'm not really having a, a healthy day right now. <laughs> right. If anything, like, we can always... Eh, it took us a while to get down here. How, how long did it take us to get to this cave? About a day. About a day. Yeah. We could return another day, or we, like we could go back in. Uh, I don't know how much is left in there. Um, uh, I might, I might try to climb up again just so I can get back into the, uh, you know, sacrifice room to do a few things. All right. Roll okay. <clears throat> you go through um, the who, front door. Who, who, not the front door. Climbing up the top. <laughs> Okay. What? Are you gonna roll for athletics? Sorry, I I lost track of you. I didn't yeah, hear yeah. that. Oh hey, how's um, uh, twenty three? Yeah, so you managed to get back up to the top with I'm a just, little bit of trouble. I'm gonna look back down at them and be like, <clears throat> at the very least, I'm going to try to uh, screw around with that uh, sacrifice room to maybe get rid of the evil inside of it. <laughs> Make it so the sacrifices don't work no more. <laughs> I was focused on the cleric, but I would like to help you as well. I have a few uh, things in mind. Okay. Um, I'll meet you down there, and I'm going to go into the room and... Um... So you said there's a pentagram on the ground. Is it painted on the ground or it's carved painted on the ground? table? Oh, it's painted on the table. Yeah, let's just, tr let's just try to erase that pentagram. <laughs> well, how are you going to do this? Um, uh, are you telling me that there are, are there any rags anywhere in this part of the room? Yeah, you can find some rags. Just cool, I would... Those dead skeletons. Yeah, I would like to use those to try to erase, the, or try to wipe away the paint and, you know, un, un pentagram it. <laughs> Alright, so some of the, the paint is coming off pretty well, and as you continue, you're managing to get a good majority of this pentagram off. So. Okay, so that that's a, that's a good start. Uh, I assume I should also roll athletics for climbing this thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. That is a 14. 14. You do not manage to make it up to cliff. Hey. Oof. I could try again. I'm gonna run like, in the front door into that room we never went into. Yeah. I might just I just follow him. Take care of any more cultists. 
All right, so you run back into the uh, the first room, or that, that hallway, and as you peer into the first room's door, you don't see anyone uh, around that campfire, but you can't see the entire room through the door. I'm going to run right into the middle of the room. All right, as you run into the middle of the room, you're jump-scared by the two hanging bodies of cultists who have killed themselves. What? Oh, yikes. Oh, geez. What? Yep. Oh, gosh. They wouldn't happen to have anything on them. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, this isn't necessarily a pretty sight. There's and two scimitars laying underneath them. And uh, they're just all... One is holding five silver pieces, and the other has nothing. Okay. I'm going to take the five silver. Why would they commit suicide? (laughs) Because everyone else is dead. Why not just leave? I don't know what their cult's about, man. (laughs) They drank the Kool-Aid, okay? (laughs) Apparently. (laughs) Is there anything else that looks kind of dangerous in this room? No. I mean, the fire's still going. They can be dangerous. (laughs) I'm, uh... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave and kind of continue down the tunnel towards the wolves now. But, like, I'm going to do kind of, like, right. very, uh, like, gingerly, uh, like, animal, not, animal not, not yeah, animal handling, non-threatening, and I'm going to kind of talk to them, saying, you're free to go, your masters are all gone now, go and live in the wild. And um, I also have, as a furball, the ability that animals understand me, Mm. All right, well, so then they're going to still kind of growl at you or whatnot, and then they both run past you and uh, make a break for the front exit. Cool, okay. I'm going to continue to the main chamber. All right, you're in the main chamber, and there's Milo scrubbing away at that pentagram. Once I finish with that, I'd also like to... Did we ever loot the body of the priest uh, of the big cult? I I don't think we did, but I can take a look. I go over Uh, there and kind of... Take the hood Look off. To see, if he has, see if he has anything valuable. <laughs> or dangerous. Either or. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll see what all he has on him. But all right. I'm mainly, like, to lift up his hood and see who he is, kind of thing. But Boris, you, you take his hood off and you see he's just kind of a, a dwarf guy. And, I mean, you don't recognize him. Uh, and, yeah, that's what happens when you take his hood off. Would you like to rifle through him? Uh, sure, since. Uh... Since Milo has asked me. All right, as you're rifling through him, uh, you'll find three copper pieces, a dagger, and uh, in one of his side pouches, you'd find an orb that, uh, when you touch it, burns your skin. Oh, oh, oh this this isn't good. That's and uh, Milo, uh, your detect evil would still be going off at this point. Uh, oh, really? You you detect the evil coming from this orb. Uh, can I take like Ouch. pieces of the robe and like or at least like cut pieces off to get like a large rag to go over it? Will that kind of help the heat from it, or is it just a hot ball? Uh, yeah. So if you take the robes or whatnot, uh, you notice that it's it's not hurting you at all, and in fact, you don't feel any heat coming from the robes. Hmm. So I'm I'm watching this all go down, and I'm seeing this glowing orb thing, and I'm like, damn, that's shiny. Uh, I'm going to run over and take my belt pouch uh, and, and just kind of like wrap it around it and, and put the orb inside my pouch. But it's in my hand. <laughs> yeah, I Caleb took it out of your hand. I, I, I kind of like when you like, 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 lift it up and I was like, I careful now. Was... He is eight feet tall. You're not going to get the, your hands on that. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, uh, so well, Picker kind of jumps up and is trying to reach for that ball because it's shiny. Oh, I'm careful. Gonna... This is a dangerous magical <laughs> artifact. Yeah, but it's shiny. Well, I'm yeah, gonna... Not exactly. I'm going to walk up to uh, Boris and ask if I may get to try to study it a little bit. Picker? No. <laughs> well, I suppose as you are a paladin, I suppose I could trust you with that. So, I kinda, like, um... I'd, I'd like to look at it, and would it be a knowledge arcana or a knowledge religion, or what, what is it going to take to try to figure this thing out? Knowledge religion. Cool. I don't have that, but I mean, hey. 
Uh, how's a 14? <laughs> uh, so this kind of, it's a dark, seemingly crystal or glass wall or whatnot. Doesn't strike any resemblance to you. But you can sense that it's uh, not from a good place. It's bad. I I don't know what this is, but I can tell you it's uh, not, nothing that we would like to... Uh, Nothing that we should let fall into the wrong hands, I think. So it would be good to show this to the uh, temple people. Maybe they can understand what this is. Alrighty. Alright. Uh, so, as uh, I suppose, are, are we all kind of gearing up to go then? Yeah, I'm so, ready to go. Uh, Seems like it's just been standing out there for a little bit. Alright, well, I, I, as we go, I... Can't, I don't think I have my updated list of what all I have in my inventory, but I believe one of the things is vial of oil. Uh, I'm going to kind of pour a bit of it over the like potions and weird alchemical like experiment stuff in the books and then light it on fire. Oh, <laughs> I would see I was thinking of doing that, but I wasn't sure if we would approve. All right, the building's on fire. You might want to get your way out. Yeah, it's time to leave. Alrighty. It's well, a cave, though. <laughs> so, so you're all out out. front, and uh, you can, as you leave, the fire builds or whatnot. I say and, we go. Yeah. It's a cave. Like it shouldn't spread too much. It no, it won't spread. I, I vote. That, I vote that we just leave now. All right. So now all four of you are chilling outside. The horse. Oh hey, whatever. Oh hey, whatever happened to those other two cultists or something? They killed themselves. What? No, he he wasn't he wasn't there. I wasn't in that room. <laughs> oh yeah, they fucking died. Oh sorry, they died themselves. However, the wolves are now free. They committed life and. I mean, I get. I okay. Let's just. I thought that we just leave this place and never yeah. come back. Uh, this is this is place. Of, that sounds. This great. place will probably yeah. be haunted forever. Okay, that sounds let's, pretty good. After all that extra stuff, we finally go back to town. Yep. All right. And Ben, are you still good to keep playing, or do you need to stop? I do need to stop, unfortunately. All right, uh, we'll pick it back up on Tuesday. Wait, can you just t can you just do the Sun Cleric voice just one more time? <laughs> the Sun Cleric says, "Oh, hello." <laughs> okay. And that's it. Okay. 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 Good <laughs> session, everyone. <laughs> I'm happy now. <laughs> Hold on, I'm back. And it's great. Welcome actually back. Died. Yes, we understand, we, Caleb. <laughs> to recap, we started on the first map in the city of Arboresh, and then y'all got transported on the second map to the city of Kavnis. And you went on that quest with the dude to get the medicine cleric, and you found him dead, and you have just brought him back to the Temple of Apollo. I mean, and you're standing dead. outside the Temple of Apollo with this dead body on the pony. <laughs> what would you like to do? <laughs> I uh, knock on the Sun Cleric's front door. <laughs> with a dead cleric over our shoulders. Alright, so the door appears open, and uh, this Sun Cleric comes in. Says, Sorry, I, I, I close the door, and then I knock on it. I don't want to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> the Sun Cleric comes up and sees you all, and says, Oh, yeah, whoa! Are you going to back it? No. No. Oh, is your my friend? Is it? <laughs> Uh, do we still have to keep? T do we have to talk to him? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, I believe we do have to talk to him. Uh, it's only the polite thing to do. Uh, I know. I know. Yes. Um. Unfortunately, uh, we did find your friend. Uh, not in the best state of things, of course. I'm gonna cut off Caleb right here and start mimicking the bad Scottish accent and say, don't worry, I'm totally alive. Oh no. What's wrong with you? The Sun Cleric, who clearly sees you do this, <laughs> is obviously What you is trying to do there? Are you trying to make fun of me? What you say about my friend Finn? Is he dead now? Uh, yes. He, uh, I'm just gonna bring over my pony. I don't think he made it. Hey, Caleb, how's your cereal? <laughs> Caleb? Sun Cleric, Cleric kind of is dismayed for a little bit, and then he turns around and says, Mills, get out here! 
And then another cleric walks out, dragonborn named Mills, and says, Oh, are these the lads that bring Fizza back? And uh, some cleric then says, No, Fizza's dead. Fizza's dead, mate. <laughs> He's doing stairs. Why is he so He's cold? Stairs. Stairs. <laughs> what are we going to do without Fizza? And Mills goes back inside. I don't suppose any of you know any resurrection spells. <laughs> oh no, I don't. I didn't know anything like that. Right. Oh, I think just Fizzer would know. Yeah, <laughs> you're not the best player. Yeah, yeah, where would we find him? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're looking for some means to heal this mark on the back of your neck, eh? And that's Indeed. probably why you wanted to help us out in the first place. Well, and I know you're also on the way to Brunzerfall. Uh, either way, you're going to need to pass through the city called First Pick. I hear rumors of a an old kinky woman who's going to throw some potions for you. Might be able to help you there. Uh, just to be oh, sure, I heard you right. You said there was an old kinky woman there? Kinky. <laughs> kinky. I mean, I'm... I mean, I'm not whatever it takes. Yeah, I've never you know? met her. <laughs> Avenge the fallen. <laughs> hey, lads, thank you very much for retrieving the body of our friend Fizza. At least we can give him proper burial. Please, come come inside and I'll, I'll get you something for your work. Oh, I walk fine. inside. That's very appreciated. All right. So you all walk inside, and it's just kind of your basic temple. It's all like this white stone with some moss around it, a lot of pictures of Apollo. There's a big... An, another statue on the inside. It's like a fountain. Um... And just a bunch of clerics writing poetry and worshiping the sun. However, there happen to be no other medicine clerics in there. Um, and so the sun cleric will bring you over to a table. Only one. <laughs> and he goes behind it and starts rummaging through some things and says, "Well, no, we can't. We can't give you much because we're not just some simple clerics here. But here, I can give you two gold pieces each, and I have a, I have this pendant here that you can use. It's a pendant of Apollo." And uh, he puts it down on the table and says, Well, I've only got one of these, so you'll have to figure out who, who can keep it. But but uh, that's that's all I can give you. And if you ever need any any refuge here, you can stay here for the night and take up a long rest or something. What exactly does it do? This uh, pendant of Apollo will, will help you out if you're ever in need of... Uh, some, some skill in the forms of medicine, or, or if you're performing a song or something. Oh no. Well, I don't think uh, there's many singers here of us, but uh, medicine should be helpful. It's very appreciated. All right. I've just uploaded the Pendant of Apollo to important D and D documents. Grants proficiency in medicine and performing E. <laughs> <laughs> performing for my E. All right, well, would, you, would you like to? Would you like to take a rest here or something? You got a long travel uh, ahead of you. If you're I would. The I would not mind that. I would love a rest. Certainly, right. love a rest as well. Well, sleep sounds good. Feel free. Help yourself to whatever food we have around here. It's probably not very good, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> I eat uh, all the communion crackers. <laughs> I look around. <laughs> uh, I, I, I look around. I think I, I find a loaf of bread and I start chomping on it, but then I start questioning if it's actually just a stone. Uh, but to, to save face, I just keep eating it until it's all gone. <laughs> this is a pretty rundown temple. <laughs> so the sun cleric has left to go retrieve the body of pizza. Yeah. Is any of the food like slightly rotten, like a, a, an apple with a worm in it or something? No, because worms are pretty good. <laughs> I'm sure okay. if you looked hard enough, you could find a. <laughs> you could find Do, a. Uh... Can can Kenku's only eat worms? <laughs> no, yes, they they just worms. more tasty with worms than. Did any of you pick up the pendant of Apollo? Uh, I'll go for uh, it. Did, did he just like throw it on the ground? I mean, there's no <laughs> one on the table. I will. He lobbed oh. it outside. He's like, "Go fetch, nerds." <laughs> he put it on I the mean, table. I mean, I have charisma, and I'm kind of healer, so I can use it. <laughs> I guess. 
All Proficiency right. in medicine means we can bring you back from dying. Mm -hmm. Which is go. good. Yeah, stabilization. Real nice, isn't it? Alright, cool. So, so, I guess I'll take that. <laughs> Unless anybody else wants it. No, you can have it. I'm, I'm not much of a healy beely sort of guy. Well, I have some healing spells as well, but I, I suppose you can have it. Actually, you do have a higher wisdom score than me. <laughs> I have a pretty high wisdom score. Well, it doesn't matter to me. You are the, the uh, paladin, of course. Okay, I'll just grab it for now. And if I just if we come across a situation where somebody else could use it more, we'll give it a shot. Cool. So do you pick it up? Uh, yes, I pick it up. <laughs> just million Five dollar minutes. question here. Bye, follow yes. me. Yes, I pick it up. <laughs> All right, uh, I find a comfy corner to sleep in. And I, I sleep in that corner. <laughs> all right, so you all are going to take a long rest then, huh? Yes. Uh, I'm going to follow go. Heckman into the corner, climb up onto his head, and just curl up in a ball. Right, right in between the two horns. I also curl up on top of Heckman. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is you know what? cozy. I'll, you know what? I'll join in on that. I'll curl up on the very top. <laughs> all right, our heroes are all just cuddling this, together. This so huge, rest. huge temple with, like, a handful <laughs> of clerics in it. They're like, oh, please, take our space. And we all just, like, <laughs> hump into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 